I don't know what we're in for. I think, I think it's another voice acted uh, adventure game. Similar to uh, similar to disco, fewer RPG elements, and many more. Yeah, I have no idea. I don't know. I saw it on a shelf in a store and was just like, I need that. I must have this now. 20 American dollars, very reasonable price for whatever the fuck that is. Oh, cool, cool. We can adjust that if we need to. Okay, yeah, these look very, very visual novel type controls. And I have cursed my PlayStation. Oh, it's already cursed. I have some, some weird shit on here that I bought for trophy reasons. Like, my name is Mayo. And my name is Mayo, too. Dead men are heavier than broken hearts. Oh, Raymond Chandler. Great. Good start. I ran out to get a pack of cigarettes, but I left my wallet at home. Yeah, that's me. I'm getting old. My name is Sonny. Sonny Featherland. An investigator for 20 years and once the star of the predatory division of the Clawville Police Department, one half of the legendary Chicken Police. But buying a pack of smokes is more than I can handle right now. Maybe I should just lay low. Yeah, I'll do that. The most colorful place in the wilderness. For is that billboard? Gods, what bullshit. The last clucking color left this city years ago. And I like the sexy parakeet in the fringe dress on his uh, on his windshield. His, whatever you call that. Eye shielder. Sun blocker. Still, what do I expect? We're living in a vast experiment and don't even notice that everything got clucked up a long time ago. We believe in this wonderland of... Are we in for so, so many puns? Is that where we're going? Chickens and hounds. Yeah, sure. Why not? It's just ridiculous. The dog eats the chicken. It's in our nature. I'm not propping up the illusion anymore. 121 days, and it's over. Retirement. Oh, man. We're just four months from retirement. And a what could possibly go wrong. Or go wrong. We're tempting so much fate. lock is a piece of shit if a dame can pick it she dames darkness. the light painted stripes on her body it whispered secret little things that were never there in the first place but she was no zebra reality was just a light switch away elizabeth or charlotte i was sure she'd have a sophisticated sounding name she had a bygone look in her eyes, older than this ancient building, and perhaps the whole city itself. Or maybe I'm just drunk. But she was the first womanly thing in my place for a long time, so I had to give her a chance. Oh, the quirky, casual sexism of the 40s. <laughs> Notebook is the detective's best friend. Here you gather vital information about the case, the suspects or victims, and the locations you will visit. 
click on any text or picture in your notebook to read the translated version in your language. Oh, okay. This used to be a nice place. Now we're competing who gets swallowed by decay first. The hotel's winning, but honestly, I'm not that far behind. All right, what do we got here? The Chicken Police is a famous detective duo. Santino, Sonny Featherland, and Marty McChicken gained fame through a case that the press called the Bloody New Year's Eve. They flew high for almost 10 years, like chickens don't, when a fateful brawl put an end to their legend. There's a series, no a series of novels about them by Meredith H. Marble. They had published 10 books over the course of seven years before the series faded out of public interest, as did the Chicken Police itself. Clawville's been an independent city-state for more than 900 years. During the city's foundation, four nations had joined forces represented by the four animal figures and the four hands on the crest of Clawville. In reality, the tribal alliance of the reptiles and the great insect clans had also played an essential part to the city's founding, but they never got to be represented on the crest. This gave birth to a political and cultural antagonism between the species. Clawville preserved its political autonomy and the dream that it's only stayed in the wilderness where predator and prey of any race can live in peace. Hence the name, the City of a Thousand Colors. So, Zootopia, but the gritty version. I'm never going to read. Maybe nobody ever has. I don't see colors anymore. Only emptiness. Everything faded. I need another drink. <laughs> Clever little, little excuse for being in black and white. I don't even know where the key is. Whatever's inside is going to stay there forever. Or I could shoot the lock. Uh, let's see. What are what are your usual joke numbers? Oh, it's only six digits. I never got to put in the nine. I don't even know what these papers are. Every whiskey has the same color nowadays, at least in this price range. I promised myself I'd write a novel one day. Apparently there were a bunch of them written about you. Yep. My last cigarette. My last cigarette. <laughs> You're lucky I don't have a light, pal. Should watch Beast Stars sometime. What is Beast Stars? She doesn't seem oh, so here, dangerous that I need to grab my gun, but you never know. Yeah. There's a new item thing flashing in the my upper right-hand corner there. The wallet is real. The badge ain't. Chief Blood Boil took mine, so I got this one out of a pack of cornflakes, just in case. Wondering if I should move my uh, move my overlay stuff around because it's been blocking things in the HUDs recently. We used to be star cops a few years ago. Tabloid press, radio interviews, and even a book series. I don't miss those days. Of course, Marty, my old partner, would disagree. Marty! He just loved the spotlight. This is... Uh, this is one of the most beautiful memories from my old life. Before Molly left me and took our daughter. Of course we have an estranged family. Why wouldn't we with a scenario like this? 
M.B. Davis, the eternal king of jazz. The photo is from the days of jazz prohibition. I only heard the old man live one time, but I'll never forget that night. And not only because I woke up at the harbor without my gun, my badge, and my pants. Very good night? Or very bad night? The good things in life don't last long. The best ones always leave first. I saw that in the window of a shoe store. I never understood it. Or what it had to do with shoes. This voice actor is very... <sighs> breathy. All right, lady, what do you want? And why are you a deer? Legs that go on for days. Deep, dark eyes. Silky skin and voice. You're in big trouble, pal. We haven't even heard her voice. She's got human hands. She's got human everything, just like the neck and head is... is deer. And a wristwatch. Let me introduce myself. My name is Deborah, Miss Deborah Ibanez. You're mistaken, ma'am. If there's a deer pun in that, I didn't catch it. Oh, really? Please enlighten me, Mr. Featherland. I'm not a private eye. I'd recommend Philip, uh, I mean, Mr. Philmar Lowe instead of me. He's a nice guy. Believe me, Mr. Featherland, it's not an accident I came to you. Look, miss, I work for the police and I'm currently on leave. I couldn't accept private commissions even if I wanted to. Not even from a classy dame like you. Am I that easy to read? Well, I mean, you are in my place of business. I assume you would be here for business reasons. That's my job. But tell me, since you've invited yourself in, would you like a drink? I don't... I don't usually drink. Well, I've got to have one. And it'd be rude of me to drink alone. So, maybe some sherry? If you insist. But... Bourbon, please. I don't usually drink, but what I do, none of that weak shit. Huh. Thank the wild ones. That's all I have. What a coincidence. So come on, spill it from the beginning. Yeah. What's a, what's a set of gams like yours doing in my office? I don't know the lingo. brown swell. I should improve my standards. Uh, okay. Oh, bedroom door, you say? Legs that go on. That's better. Now, if I understand correctly, your mistress is receiving threats. What kind of threats, exactly? I know the guitar, yeah. I, I have an Ibanez, actually. That is the that is the guitar I have. Uh, I don't know if it has any relation to deer. Matter. First, there were letters. Then it came printed on a wine bottle's label, sent as a gift. Then carved into a brick, thrown through the window. And finally, they painted it on the wall of the house in giant red letters. I think it's time to dig a little deeper, if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh. You some routine the visual novels player bleh, the visual novel player's best friend the autoplay button that's a goat yeah that door, that's the one with like the big the curly horns right dirty clothes cigarette butts and empty bottles that sounds like a shitty kingdom okay Focus on what you know about the suspect. Is he or she suspicious? Concentrate on that. Subject, John Doe. Get it. 
This fella is rather suspicious. I need to concentrate on that. Suspicious. Why are you suspicious? I never played um, L.A. Noir, but from what I understand, that is the entire game is uh, uh, your your hard-boiled detective character being angry and screaming at people. Gather impressions. Every impression adds a new question line. The detective meter is my best friend. It shows how well the questioning is going. Okay. I must be cautious and smart. This dame seems shy, which I can use to my advantage. Oh, wow. Seeing you in not profile is weird. Or I can scare her off. Let's start gently. And when the time comes, we can go in hard. Yuck, yuck. All right. Who are you? Who you? Who you? Hmm. Must be cautious and smart. This dame seems shy, which I can use to my advantage, but I must be careful about what I say or I could scare her off. Let's start gently. When the time comes, we... Oh, it's exactly what he just said. Who exactly are you, ma'am? So much for my fucking Dick Tracy voice. Important, Mr. Featherland. You're important enough to deal with such a delicate matter, right? I carry out the wishes of my employer, nothing more. This means simple paperwork, most of the time. You've been thrown into deep water, sweetheart. Tell me, can you even swim? Of course not, I'm a deer. This is just as unpleasant for me as it is for you. I'm a land-dwelling quadruped. We're not built for swimming. We're built for running through the fields. All right, which part of the city you live on? Tell me, which part of the city do you live in? Calavera Hills? Flowerville, maybe? Look, I... I don't want to answer that. I'm here on behalf of my employer, and not on personal business. Fair point, Deborah. Let's try a different approach. I guess that was a good thing. Why did you have to visit me this particular evening? I have my reasons. I may look like a silly little fawn, and maybe I am, but I still have common sense. I don't doubt that for a second, Miss Ibanez. This day is essential to my mistress, and she thought it's also important to you. A message in itself, for sure. But to be honest, even you are. You know what? I, I think I like them better than any alternative I could think of. Such. Like, like the photorealistic nature of them is really interesting. And like as far as where the the human and animal features, like where that line delineates, I don't I'm not sure yet. But I do like I do like how it's photorealistic. I can say that much. Why did you come? Why not why not the big cheese? Why did you come to visit me? Why not your employer herself? My employer is Miss Natasha Katsenko. She hasn't been leaving her home lately. Only if she really has to. How so? Miss Natasha is afraid. She's scared because of those unwanted messages. And everyone knows who she is. I don't know who she is. She's that kind of woman. I don't know what you mean. Of course you do, Deborah. Thank you, by the way. Kind of. Kind of how it feels. We avoided the point long enough. Deborah's hiding something, no question. Let's focus on that. L.A. Noir meets Bojack Horseman. So what do you want, toots? What do you want from me? Me? Oh, don't be silly, Deborah. I mean your employer. I was just talking to myself out loud. Well, Miss Katsenko thinks you're a great detective, and you're also reliable. That's why I came. Did she also give you the lockpick? Please, 
Could you let this go? I'm really embarrassed. Sorry, sweetheart. I'm just teasing you. As soon as I saw you, you were forgiven. That's... that's very nice of you. It has nothing to do with being nice. No way a dame like you could be any threat. It's not like that's a common trope in this style of fiction or nothing. What's a femme fatale? I've never even heard of such a thing. Don't you think this whole thing is a little suspicious? Look, Santino. I'll explain everything. I have no doubt about that. You look just the type, sweetheart. No offense. I'll take that as a compliment. Or maybe I'll act like I haven't heard it. You see, we're starting to understand each other. Okay, I was wondering if he was going for a Humphrey Bogart impression and that sweetheart kind of, kind of, yeah, sealed the deal. <laughs> so why should I believe you? Tell me, Deborah, why should I believe you at all? Because my mistress trusts you. Should that be enough? If you really like what she thinks you are, then yes. Damn, what can I say to that? Look, I didn't mean to back you up against the wall. And yet here I am. Word, sweetheart. Did you ever want to be a cop? No, not for the world. <laughs> Smart answer. Alright, be honest with me. And since I only got one option, I guess this is going to just be it then. And tell me what you're so afraid of. You know, Mr. Featherland, my mistress's partner is Hobart Wessler. Or as most people know him. Ibn Wessler, the kingpin. Bum, bum, bum. Feathery gods, help me. So you get it now. The secrecy. To put it mildly, I think I understand it all. Wessler. This little piece of the puzzle changes everything. Nice work, partner. Exactly how I would have done ten years ago. Beware Clawville, Sunny Featherland, and the Chicken Police are back in action. Minus the part where I'm estranged from my partner, it seems. Alright, what do we got? We added a lot to that Kodak man. The victim, a lady, is the target of some strange threats, all of them written. Messenger? A certain, uh, Miss Natasha. The mysterious messenger. Oh, I see, I see. And the employer is none other than the infamous gangster Ibn Wessler. I don't know who that is yet, but I'm sure we'll find out. Uh, let's see. Yeah. What do we got here? Runs errands, sophisticated, not particularly wealthy or influential, afraid, secretive, or a good actress. Lying to me a little bit. Presumably there's a reason she could just tell her partner so he could simply kill the person in the threats. I guess. Yeah, one would think that would be one of the advantages of working with notorious, uh, dangerous criminal types, is that you can answer these sort of things fairly bluntly. Not only working with- oh, partner in that sense, like, they're- they're an item, then... Oh, maybe she was two-timing him. Maybe she was go running around downtown. And that's why she can't tell him. Felis Caddis. I love that they put the Latin names here. It reminds me of that scene from Fantastic Mr. Fox. Which is a phenomenal, I almost said a fantastic movie. Yuck, yuck. No, it's a great fucking movie if you haven't seen it. Wes Anderson, stop motion. Ah, it's brilliant. Real estate mogul, bank director, museum owner, distiller, smuggler, and information broker. Yeah, he's got his dirty little paws everywhere in the city's underworld. Three gods are revered in most places across the wilderness. They're the great wild ones who make up the holy trinity of creation, destruction, and silence. 
Haridi is the goddess of creation, Patapi is the lord of destruction, and Nikvatiti is the genderless ghost of silence and nothingness, keeping the balance between creation and yeah, destruction in their never-ending conflict. Is Chicken Police the modern evolution of the Zeldaverse? Eh? Eh? Very din and whatever. It's been a long time since I played Ocarina, but you know what I'm talking about. Naru, Din, and um, the blue one. Legs that go. Yeah, yeah, nothing different there. Why don't you take it to the police? Just go there and file a report. Photos, flashing lights, fingerprints, you know the drill. The evidence is very clear. Even a moderately talented detective could easily wrap this case up. Or just try the phone. Triple five, triple one. Please, take a look at this. Well, okay. Let's see. What do we got here? A clue? Uh, evidence uh, ah, items store all the essential items throughout the case ironic but ever since I've been on furlough with only my fake badge sitting in my cabinet, I feel more like a cop than I ever had before. More like a Clawville cop, anyway. I haven't dusted you off in a while, partner. Looks like I may be needing you now. Time to commit some justifiable homicides. Oh, man, I totally get you. Uh... Furore, that's it. Um... When I watched Trigun for the first time, I was just fascinated by Wolfwood's cigarettes because they always had this, this little bend in them like that. The Czar Club. I know Molly very well. Please note this when deciding whether or not to accept my assignment. Miss Abanez is a trusted friend. Treat her as a gentleman. And I know Molly very well. Oh, well. Please note this when deciding whether or not to accept my assignment. Miss Ibanez is a trusted friend. Treat her as gentleman. N. I felt like I'd been hit on the back of my head with a blackjack. Reality tilted. Molly. Good God. What was her name doing there? I glanced at the opposite wall with the well-worn picture frames. Like an eternally dark hole in the wall. Molly is our ex-wife, I think? Wearing a light silk dress. Who ran away and took the kid? The waves caressing her beautiful long legs. Why, Molly? Why now? Mr. Featherland? Santino, are you all right? What the hell is this supposed to mean? I don't know anything, Mr. Santino. My mistress told me to give this to you. She said you'd understand. Don't you? Oh, of course I understand, Miss Ibanez. I get it very well. But this case is becoming more and more confusing. It's starting to look like blackmail. Blackmail? Oh, no. Play innocent with me. But... All right. When can I visit? Visit? Me? Not you. Miss Katsenko. Oh, yes. I don't give a fuck about you. Club. Didn't you tell me she's not the social kind? That she's especially unsociable? Or does she only like loud and crowded clubs? No, she's really not like that. But she owns the place. Judging by the flyer, it must be a very busy club. Especially on New Year's Eve, right? I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding Miss Katsenko. But there's one small problem, Mr. Featherland. Let me guess. Mr. Wessler better not know about my visit. Exactly. How did you know? I'm just good like that. Oh, and please, call me Sonny. It was a 
a pleasure to meet you, Mr. I mean, Sonny. I'll talk about the rest with Ms. Katsenko in person. A good friend of mine would be happy to take you home if you'd like. I'd appreciate that, Sonny. Who's a little bunny boy? He's a bunny. Find Natasha. Czar Club. Oh, of course, Katsenko. That's why the voice had a Russian accent. The cat is Russian. Russian or Eastern Europeanly situated. Owner of the hotel, good friend. Oh, my landlord. Five 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 nine three two. Well, let's give Bunny Boy a call, shall we? One second, forgot to switch those off. There we go. All right, five, five. Five, one, three, two. Did I fuck up the number? Fucked up the number. This is why I'm a detective and not a, a, a numbers writer. Also, how the fuck am I? Oh, right, because he's got human hands. That's right. It's like, how do you do a rotary phone with feathers? Hey, Lou. wings. Am I bothering you? Could you come over? I've got a favor to ask if you're not busy. For you, anything. Just a minute. Lewis, the only decent landlord. <laughs> With my horrible a few minutes hands. later. He lived in the rooms above, so it wasn't difficult getting here. Did he hop right to it? Mentioned that he's a rabbit. It was a quick hop. The Atlas Hotel was his inheritance. It was once a well-renowned place, but not anymore. The last economic crisis ruined it. And now, besides me, he was the only resident of this enormous place. His father used to own the place. He worked here in the summers as a child. He was a... Eh? Worked in the laundry room. The good old rabbit. I can always count on him, even on New Year's Eve. Thanks for being so quick, Lewis. Can you drive Miss Ibanez home? I have some things to take care of. Of course, Sonny. You know anything for you. Thank you for being so considerate, Sonny. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. Goodbye, then. So long, Deborah. Before I visit the club, I have to take a detour. I've got a feeling that this case isn't going to be a one-man job. And there's only one bird in the city I can trust. My ex-partner, Marty. He's going to be at the station. I can only hope he'll be willing to talk to me. We haven't spoken since the night I fucked his wife. Owens the Czar Club. HQ of the department, a.k.a. the meat grinder. Huge dark building for shady people, and I don't necessarily mean those who are sitting in the jail. One of the most famous nightclubs in the city. Owner of the juiciest booties and hottest fist freak... Oh. 
Owners of the juiciest booties and the hardest fists frequent the place. <laughs> Who the fuck? Is this a lingo thing that I'm just not, that doesn't translate to the modern day? Or what the fuck is that? Oh, and it's famous for not serving cops. <laughs> Right, what the fuck? Let's see, main scenes move the story forward. They also determine which locations open up or close down. Complete all of them to beat the game. Limited scenes are open for a specific duration, which is determined by the main story progression. If you're a completionist, be sure to visit them all before you move on to the next main scene. Oh, I think we will be doing that. Yes, thank you, please. Closed scenes cannot be reached for the time being. The state will often change throughout the story progression and can be temporary or permanent. Right now, looks like I only got the one scene. I gotta go talk to Marty. It was New Year's Eve, and I was driving, half drunk. That's not safe, Sonny. Life's work, but still, it didn't feel any different. Every day was the same, and the 121 days I had left till my retirement seemed like an eternity. I'm gonna repeat the number just in case I hadn't tempted fate enough the first time. I see the same thing every day. A woman in a red nightgown dances slowly in circles to smooth music. The nine o'clock show with a glass of cheap bourbon and the red gown with the silent music. I one of them peeping Tom detectives. The proud city of Clawville is slowly eating itself alive. And we're still here, with nothing left to lose but our sanity, while others, the smart ones, had already gone. Molly. Does her name really upset me this much? All those years of solitude, and I still jump without question every time I hear it. And then the Has this happened before, Sonny? Ex partner who hates me, but I know I have to speak with him, no matter what. Why do I feel like the past is watching me on this goddamn night? Chapter One Detour. I knew where to find Marty. At the station, we'd always draw straws about holiday duty. Marty never joined in. He always took the New Year's Eve shift, even though he had someone to go home to. I understood. Ten years ago, we survived the night the press called the Bloody New Year. Forgotten by Clawville, but not by us. We both left parts of ourselves behind that night. For me, it was a gizzard. For him, it was his left ball. Back in the day, I used to patrol the city streets in one of these. I don't miss it, but it used to have its advantages. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sonny is just a phenomenal fuck up. Everyone else is fine. Uh, kind of reminds me of um... Bloodhound Blood Boil was promoted to chief of police. The Castilia clan thought this would frighten the old hound, but yeah. they were so wrong. The uh... if you ever read um, Thirty Days of Night. No. The the comics. They made a movie with Josh Hartnett, which was pretty good, but uh, they were a comic series for a long time before that. For the crown, for the king! Every time this poster disappears, good old Blood Boy puts it right back immediately. I tore it down at least three times already. Actually, it's a kind of passive aggressive game for us with the chief. Um, one of the, uh, one of the series is, um, 
one of the mini arcs is called uh, Lex Nova in the case of the 400 dead Mexican girls. And it's a vampire detective who is doing the uh, hard-boiled noir monologue thing, except he's doing it out loud. And he doesn't realize that. He's lost part of his mind. And so <laughs> everyone around him can hear him talking, and he has no idea that he's speaking out loud. It's very funny. Phyllis and Roy's, two hedgehogs with an arrogance typical of novice cops. They're as prickly as they look, officious little shitheads, but harmless. I would recommend it. It's one half of a, a run they did called Bloodsucker Tales. Um, eight issues, I think, and each issue was an installment of that story, and the, and a, half of it would be an installment of that story, and half was an installment of another story called Dead Billy Dead, about a young punk what got turned into a vampire and had to go back to his ex-girlfriend on a dark and stormy night to survive kind of a thing. Well, look at that. It's not as good as uh, Lex Nova, but it's here. fine. I heard the big boss threw you out. Tough luck, boys. I may not be on duty, but I'm still a cop, just like you. Well, more than you. Hey, you don't have to be so big and sure, bud. By the way, you're on luck. Blood boils not in tonight. The lawyer's in charge. I'm about a thousand years old from the sound of it. Buffalo is here tonight. If he doesn't end up in a cell again, he's lucky. <laughs> you got it. You looking for Marty, eh? I see you're still the brains around here, Phyllis. Yeah, I'm looking for Marty. Birds of a feather flock together. I see you're still the funny guy around here. You'll find the giant feather duster at the shooting range, as always. Hey, Royce, I'm telling you this because maybe you'll be able to understand. If this prickly shithead makes another racist remark, I'll strangle him with his own raincoat. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Hey, whose side are you on, you jerk? Yeah, I thought you were supposed to be racist buddies. Why ain't you doing a racism with me? By the way, what's with the raincoats? Couldn't you find an umbrella? Why? Frank says it'll be rain. And see, that's raining. He's a frog, so he must know. Yeah, well, I'm a rooster, but I hate getting up early. Right. Yeah. Raincoats are just fine, okay. You have a problem with that, Sonny? No, just, uh, you know, the spikes sticking through and all. <laughs> I just noticed that, that like a second before he yeah, said you know it. What? Just forget it. <laughs> oh, good. That's that's very good. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that's all the things. Yeah. What do we got? We got Royes. He's a hedgehog. Real little ass plug. He's too small of a fish in the ocean to be worth bribing. I hate him almost as much as I hate his partner, the porcupine. Big and dumb. Resembles Marty a little, except that Royez doesn't have a cunning heart. Ah, these damn porcupines and hedgehogs. I hate all of them. Especially how racist all they are. Every single one of them. All they are. They all are. Here we are again. Clawville Police Department. I've never been good at history, but if I'm not mistaken, this place has been a church, a hospital, and even some insane cult secret hideout over the years. No, no, no. Fuck everything else. I want to know more about that. Secrets of the ages. And some drunk pigs in the basement. Yeah, it looks like we aren't going for the low-hanging fruit of the, um, the, the pigs... Looks like we got us a leopard. We got a uh, some kind of bulldog over there. Ooh, a little schnauzer named Bosco. We got uh, this, this iguana man. Uh, oh, look is down. There we go. Hey, Monica. 
Monica Rosen. Receptionist in theory, but in reality, she's doing literally everything around here. Like the beating heart of the PD. She's too good for this place, even for this city. Hey, Monica. Hey, Boss Bird. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be celebrating somewhere? Every day's a holiday since I got out of here. I love the glasses. What are you doing here? That should be falling right off right now, but I love them anyway. Yeah, you could look after a few things for me, but first, I'd like to talk to Mr. Big Beak McChicken himself. Those two prickly assholes told me he's emptying the magazines in the hole. Like always. And if he carries on like that, he's going to use up all our ammo. So it would be nice if you drag him out of there. You know how this day is for him. I gotta file the budget reports. Do you know how much bullets cost? Like that. Yeah, I know. Okay, so just sign here and you're good to go. Thank you, darling. Don't mention it, boss bird. Yeah, yeah, glasses. Glasses for these, these, uh homunculi here should be fucking more like earmuffs. Marty drinks this shit. I've never tried it, but I'm pretty sure it's gross and probably toxic. Ew, Dr. Mountain. Dr. Mountain. I tried to say Dr. Pepper and Mountain Dew at the same time, and that's, what's, that's what came out. Honor. Strength. Dr. Mountain. <laughs> For the love of the wild gods, I'm gonna be sick. Hey, Mort. Are you too old for this shit? Mort Mardigan, a notorious deadbeat. Poor guy's been blind since his teenage years. Oh, he's the... He's the crim. He's the, uh, the hooligan. Oh, his little tongue goes... Mort, you scabious beast. What the hell did you do? They gave him eyebrows and a beard. Just a bit of trouble in the bar, and uh, someone got knocked on the head with a glass. It wasn't my fault. I'm as blind as a bat, am I right? <laughs> Did that God damn it, you? Morty. Listen, sonny boy, go tell them to leave me alone, eh? It's New Year's Eve, after all, and I didn't even do anything wrong. Not that wrong. Where's your little lapdog to get you out of this mess? Blind as a bat, which might explain that tie. Also, why's he got readers? He's a good boy, Sonny. And he's good to me, believe me. Oh, God, spare me the details. When will you finally realize that little shit's been using you? Oh, of course, if you think me. <laughs> what could a pretty boy like him want from this old monster? Still, Sunny, I have no one else. Do you understand that? Don't you? Even you deserve better, pal. By the way, you look horrible, even for yourself. By the way, Morty, you look like shit. Well, I'm not what I used to be. But neither are you, judging from your voice. But I'm seeing a doctor, Sammy boy. I really am. Are you? Don't need to, Mort. I'm fine. Anyway, if Bubo prescribed you something, don't even think about taking it. Uh, I don't talk to that insane <laughs> owl. Damn right. Please, say something on my behalf, okay? I really um, don't have time for this detective buffalo shit. Hey, careful with that. Buffalo Malloy is the chief today. <laughs> like I... In... Clash of the Titans. Bubo was a mechanical owl. Shit, and I don't need it either. Sunny boy, that you've always been a good Harry Hamlin and company like had as a companion. Pigeon. Oh man, the the whole crew's here. We got Bosco.
chow hound. I guess that's like uh, like a food, like a literal food thing. They made a little gag about it in the remake with uh, what's his name, the guy from Avatar. That uh, it, the remake sucked. God, that movie was terrible. Um, but they did a little gag where it's like, oh, it's in a shop, and like, oh, hey, it's a little mechanical bird, and they just kind of threw it away. Like, hey. Eh. We got the little hummingbird running everything. She's a hummingbird in theory, but many say she's a real angel. When I used to come into the station daily, her presence was the sugar in my bit of morning coffee. Oh, God. Light fingered bastard. He's too old to save himself. And then we got, yeah, Blood Boil, the chief, hates me. And then there's apparently another chief who is a buffalo. Oh, I guess Bubo is the Latin word for owl. I did not know that. That, I, I finally know why they named the, the, the mechanical owl that. Good to know. Morphinist. Is he hooked on the juice? Hey, Bosco. Detective Chow Hound Bosco. He thinks he's a real alpha, but nah, he's just a lap dog. Holy wild ones. Look what the cat dragged in. Hello, <laughs> he's got the fur. <laughs> Coming out from under the sleeves. I've been sniffing around one of the rundown joints. You know how it goes. And boom, this son of a lizard comes flying out the window. I didn't know the lizards could fly. <laughs> so, Mort was being a bad, bad boy again. Nothing unusual. And you? Still dying? I'm oh, yeah, like War of the Titans or some shit. I didn't even bother seeing. It's as unpleasant to me as it is to you. All right, all right. No need to bite. I wasn't trying to mess with you. You have Moses and Plato for that. And of course, blood boil. Let's hope I won't run into any of them tonight. Looking for Marty, eh? Ever since you left, he's kind of lost. He's trying to hide it, but he's not the same bird. Well, I don't think we'll have a teary reunion thinking about how we parted. Let me give you some advice, Sonny. Let him rage. He'll be the same after that. Anyway, he was the one that shot you, right? You should be mad, not him. It's not that simple, Bosco. But we'll see how he reacts. Thanks anyway. No worries, pal. takes is one look and my comb starts to tingle which never means anything good all it takes is hate them tingly combs we used one of these as target practice once not out of disrespect we were just too damn drunk yeah that'll do it one of blood boils favorites mainly because he's a dog of course Ah, favoritism in the ranks, I see. I'm really not in the mood to meet Deputy Malloy or any of my ex-colleagues from the Predatory Division. We used one of these as target practice once. Officer Jardine. Officer Jardine. They say she's clever, smart, and dangerous. We need more of her kind in here. So all the, are we gonna do the are all the dogs gonna be male and the cats are all gonna be female? Is that how this is gonna go? This down to the shooting range. Ride. Last time we saw each other, he had a smoking gun in his hand and I was bleeding. It was the worst birthday party of my life. It's worth a try. Keep your gun clean, Mr. Lawman. (laughs) 
Long thighs and a big gun. That's Marty's idea of a perfect woman. <laughs> Can't blame him for it. Uh, hey, you, if you let the ammunition boxes open again, I'll kick your chicken ass. I'll kick your clucking ass, Marty. Okay. Don't kick my clucking ass. I was just about to go when you came in, so if you want shooting practice, maybe turn on the lights first. You're right. Wow. I'm gonna do that. Marty, that's a voice. Oh, jeez. I was just... You're right. <laughs> Big Bertha 2. Her Majesty Big Bertha, or rather Big Bertha too, because there was one before her, a sawed-off little broad, but we lost her in a swamp. Marty cried for a week, but once he saw this giant lady here, the balance of the universe was restored. Marty likes guns. I believe this piece is forbidden. Cops can't use it, but this is Marty's personal collection, so it doesn't matter. At least nobody has ever complained. Linda? Claudia, tiny, dark, and angry, and hits you where it hurts the most. I know her well. Marty calls her Susie, and I have to say, this little she-devil pulled us out of many tough situations over the years. And put one in my leg that one time. Hey, Marty. Marty looks good. Big and loud and angry as always. Hey, Marty. Oh, well, look who's here. Hello, boss bird. Were you lost? This is the PD building, you know. Got this shit, Marty. We're better than this. Well, at least you are. Better than anyone, huh? Marty, come on, let's forget that. What's past is past. Uh, easy for you to say, Sonny. Damn it, Marty, you shot me, remember? I almost bled to death. Hell yeah, I remember. Unfortunately, my aim wasn't good enough. I need your help, okay? That's what you want to hear. Well, it's a start. Okay, I've said it. I won't do it again. <laughs> yeah, right. So, are you in? Just for tonight. Small case, we'll wrap it up in no time. What kind of case? A personal one. How personal? Very. The kind of case where if you come with me right now, you're not on duty anymore. Oh, damn, Sonny. Stop it right there. I'm in. That's... that's it? Uh, do you know how boring life is here without your stupid reckless shit? Soon enough, I'll shoot all the ammo in here out of boredom. Right, so tell me. I'm not it's loving out. Marty's voice. I'll tell you in the car. Ooh, can I bring Bertha? Nah, for the love of... Marty, this is a routine case. You can't bring your shotgun, okay? Bertha stays. Okay, okay. But at least Susie can come, right? Uh, all right, Susie can come. That's what I want to hear. Shooting practice, you say? Start. Oh, God. Ah! Ah! Killers! I'm out of bullets! I gotta reload! Don't shoot the elephants! Shoot the mommy chicken and her baby. Marty's score is 10,050. I'll beat that. Let me try again. Nope. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. All 
Alright, one last time and then we'll move on. Almost. It feels like it's longer than the last one. Sharpshooter? Sharpshooter? Score at least 5,000 points on the shooting range. Every time I hit a target, it increases my time. Oh, there's a little stopwatch down in the bottom left. I didn't see that. I got the second best score, Marty. I'll be back for you one day. See what happens when I beat your score, Marty. All the cops are cockerels. They're chickens. What's a cockerel? Is that just a fancy word for a chicken? Do I sound like a fool? I often sound like a fool. Still drink coffee? Yeah, my only poison. Except for guns, of course. And women. And cigarettes, and opium, and heroin. Oh, a nice cup of Zips coffee. Dissecting small animals I'm in the in. woods. Oh, and maybe we'll get into a little fight too, huh? If it comes and needless to violence. You without a blink. A fancy word for a rooster. Source of cock. Ah, did not know that. I learned things. Also, Shrike, I'm glad you're here, because now the puns can begin in earnest. Well, all right. To the city, then. You don't have to come with me, you know. Okay, okay. So not all the co not all the cops. Me and my partner are chicken police. We got a couple of dogs. We got a, so we got a leopard. It smells too. What the furry hell is Blood Boil doing here? Ah, uh, well, it seems we can't avoid speaking to him. Oh yes, we can. You have your rifle with you, right? No, you told me to leave it behind. <laughs> Just kidding, sort of. We got the chief, who is this uh, this good bloodhound over here. I know they want me to hate him, but look at his jowls. He is the goodest of boys. The chief doesn't seem to be in a good mood, but he never is, actually. What a surprise. The two pigeons back together. And without my permission, of course. Chief Bloodboil. Look at all them jowls. What was that, Santino? Nothing, sir. What a lovely evening. Am I right? I don't want to hear your crowing, Santino. What the hell are you doing here? Hey, hey, hey. Careful with the racist barking, old hound. Oh, oh it's getting hot in here. Can we just skip this part? It's New Year's after all. And you're on duty, if I'm not mistaken, Martin. Where do you think you're going? That's it, boss. To serve and protect. Sonny was in the neighborhood and stopped by to say hi. He's a cop too, right? Only on paper, and you know that very well, detective. I don't want any trouble, boss. I just wanted to say hi to Monica, and then this feather pillow showed up. I invited him to grab a quick coffee. You can allow him that much, can't you? Your coffee breaks usually end up in shooting or brawling, chickens. That's not how coffee breaks usually go. Oh, have a heart. It's New Year's Eve and I haven't seen my It's supposed to be cream and sugar, not bullets and blood. How touch it. You shot him with a shotgun, if I remember. <laughs> Family quarrel. For all the marrow bones of the world, get the hell out of my sight. Have a lovely evening, boss. You especially. Fuck off right now, Santino. He said the fuck word. 
This stream is no longer safe for children. My usual reminder, if there are any children watching, please leave. I don't know how Twitch screens that sort of thing, if they do. Well, it's okay. The, uh, the game is certainly making enough of its puns on its own. I'm sure that'll give you inspiration. Alright, so what did we learn here? Oh, it's Marty, not the cat. Ah, we've been partners for almost ten long hard years. Well, we were, but now he's helping me only unofficially until I wrap up the case. He's a hothead with a hard fist, but he's loyal to the end and I can count on him every way. Except for that time he shot me. Especially when guns are in the picture. Remember that time he shot me? That's why he reveals his true self. He's a blood psychopath. people. Ah, blood boil. Uh, Chief hates me. He's my boss. He's a living statue of justice. And he's a racist bastard because this is the 40s and everyone's racist. Zip H. Murray? I don't even know where I... I have not yet. He's told me about it. Um, it's on my to-do list. I've seen images of it, but I haven't actually played it. But yeah, feels there's it's got some similar vibes. Yeah, we saw that. Famous for its coffee. Operating a joint outside of Roachtown. Roachtown, you say? Moses is a Tibetan sand fox and Plato is a palace cat. Their old rivals are Sonny and Marty currently working at the Clawville PD's homicide division. I wonder if we'll get to meet those crazy kooks. Speaking with the chief first, and it would be nice to say goodbye to Monica, too. All right, Monica, let's say farewells. Fairsy wellsies. We're leaving, sweetheart. Stay safe, boys. I'm glad to see you two together again. I'm afraid you're alone with that. Hey, don't make me change my mind. You won't, Marty. I bet you can't wait to get mixed up in some serious trouble again. Yep, that's true. I'm serious, boys. Be careful out there. We're big birds, Monica. We can take care of ourselves. Mostly. Okay. A little bit. Take care of each other, too. Maybe kind of, sort of. We can't not take care of ourselves. Let's put it that way. Alright, so. These are the temporary side questy type locations. And this here is the, the next main story beat. Let's go get that coffee. The hop dog was like the last warning. He can still turn back. My eyes lingered on the sign. An enormous dog. Like a neon god with limitless power over cheap hot dogs, plastic hamburgers, and watered down coffee. The cold light called me, but I didn't want to get out of the car. If we went in, we were all going to be pancakes, kept together by cold syrup. Marty's worried look shook me out of my reverie. Oh, cluck. Was I talking to myself again? Sonny, I got news for you. You've been talking to yourself this whole time. Fresh breakfast and lunch. Oh, hello, fly guy. 
There used to be such life around here before it became an insect ghetto. That was a very long time ago, Marty. Yeah, there was a a, a line earlier that implied that the um... entire city. Well, since it became the only cook and the waitress, I imagine it's all gone. Um, there was a line earlier that implied the lizards and the insects are all. Uh, That's right. I have no idea what that. All the the, the poor ghettoized class. But its aroma is unbeatable. Peaceful, isn't it? Because mm, the whole town's probably drunk by now. Maybe that's the only way it can bear itself. Doesn't it remind you of someone? Shut up, Marty. Before I smack you across the chops. Did this wreck belong to Zip? Well, it's a wreck just like him, so I guess it could. Sup, fly guy. Oh, hello. Ah, it's one of our old books. One of the books written about us. I didn't realize I had uh, checked that shit. Look at the poor bastard. He's looking okay, Marty. Remember what we saw when we worked at the hive? Wild ones. Don't even remind me. I'm trying to forget that shit every day. It's been even worse since. I guess you heard about the riots. Who hasn't? You know, people are afraid that the Great Fire will happen again, and those hive houses are pretty flammable. I don't speak of the devil, Marty. But to be honest, I... I have no idea how this insect matter can be solved. I do. We just open the ghettos and let the insects live among us like they did for centuries. Your heart is pure gold, buddy. But you know it's not that easy. Clawville isn't what it used to be. Zip. Small time criminal, but the underworld pushed him out. Now he makes the best damn coffee in the whole city. Okay, he's our CI. That's good. That's good. The Cobbler District, also known as the Hive or Roach Town, was once part of the city, but it became a walled off ghetto where 98% of the city's insect population is forced to live. Currently, the biggest threat to the city are the riots of the Hive that have driven, almost driven the city state to the brink of civil war multiple times. Not long after the meat war and the following economic crisis in 893, a fire almost destroyed the entire city of Clawville. Originated in the Ratwell District, not even the River Times was able to stand in its way. Get it? River Times. Ha! It was a fiery hell incarnate, after which the city had to be built up again almost from scratch. Sup, fly guy? Hey, pal. Can you hear me? <laughs> Hold on, let me get another look at that. I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't understand what I'm saying. Or he doesn't want to. That's also very likely. I mean, I love that he's playing the double neck guitar like that. That's great. Guys. At least he's playing music. I mean, he's doing something. Most of the destitute take up drinking or drugs. Or worse. Mm. Anime. You know about the light. You mean the light the insects believe in? Yeah, their afterlife. If they want to go into the light, they set themselves on fire. Yeah, I've heard that. Maybe it's not a bad way to go. The fuck are you talking about? Burning to death sounds like a horrible way to go. The God of Pancakes. sure that thing's a dog? I always wondered. The name Hop Dog is quite a giveaway. Don't you think so, Mr. Detective? Sometimes the most natural connections lead us astray. Who said that? A natural born genius? <laughs> yeah, right. Warning. We don't serve bugs here. Get on out of here, you insects. Oh, that's furry. Is this still a thing? 
The situation's getting even worse, Marty. Have you heard how the young mothers of the Cobbler District are forced to make a living? I have no idea what goes on in the hive, Sonny. I don't think I want to know. But you're still gonna tell me, right? Prostitution is the lesser evil. What's worse is that some folks have to sell their kids when they're still larvae. Wait, what? Why? Well, they do have 6,000 of them at a time, so I'm sure they can afford to lose a couple. Gourmet food in the most expensive restaurants. Oh, I'm gonna be sick. We made this city, Marty. Clawville didn't do this to itself. Don't ever forget that. I thought we came here for a friendly, gentle cup of coffee. Now you're making me think of all the inequities of the world. Ugh, the place is deserted. Poor Zip. You're yeah, right. Yeah, the guy's middle name is Bad Luck. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so pitiful. <laughs> oh, Zip. Oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> How you doing? He sure didn't get any younger. Or prettier. You think he's still mad at us? Frankly, Marty, I don't give, don't a, give damn. a damn. Ah. Ah. Hello, boys. Now, get the hell out of here while I'm asking nicely. Hey, is that how you greet two of Even though that's a Clark Gable, not a Humphrey Bogart, but still. I got a shotgun under the bar. No, you don't, because if you had, we'd arrest you here and now. If there's still life in you when you're full of buckshot. Ah, it's going well so far. We're just hey, the Joe Pesci. Okay, like old times. Okay, so I know what they're trying to go for with the fingernails. Yeah. Because, you know, fact, raccoons and claws and shit, yeah. they're trying to... All right. And where'd you blow in from? It doesn't read as raccoon to me. It reads more like... Going somewhere. Everybody's going somewhere, right? Tell me, how much do you know, Zip? 30-year-old hot topic... Bottom of the well. Fetish nails. Goes down around Ibn Wessler. Holy hell, Wessler? You've dipped your wings in deep shit, boys. If you've got anything on him, don't keep it to yourself. We'd be grateful. <laughs> oh yeah, he's doing witch fingers with the puke. This time, huh? You know, Ibn's acting strange nowadays. He always believed that if you want something done, you do it yourself. That's how it was for years anyway. And? But now, he left his real estate, the fish racing clubs, the casinos, and the bars to his right-hand man, Mongrel Mick. And ever since... Man, that name feels racist, but like... Out, ...brooding in the seediest joints of the city. Nobody ever knew him to be like this. Weird, huh? Yeah, weird. Do you think it's about a lady? It's always about a lady. Well, there is a woman. I knew it. But not like you think. Is this gonna cost much? Only a favor. Like the good old days. Okay, I'm in. Can that favor include two coffees? One cream, no sugar, one lots of both. <laughs> Daily offer, almost ham and tomato. Let's see, we got a few in that conversation. What do we got? I like how the the um the profile pictures are just sketches until we actually meet them. I just noticed that because Zips got traded out for this this photo here. He's getting old, but he's got connections. It's worth questioning him about stuff. Acting strange, as if he was trying to withdraw from his own shady business to live a simple life. But every time he gets out, they pull him back in. Mick is one of the most infamous henchmen of Ibn Wesley, known by many rather scary nicknames thanks to his cruel nature. Sonny and Marty have crossed paths with Mick before, and it took a lot of effort to get out of those encounters with feathers intact. Except Sonny and Marty... No, Sonny and Marty, yeah. 
not not uh who's it's and Moses and Plato or whatever the fuck they were called the other the bad cops jukebox <laughs> It's a howler monkey. <laughs> Not all cops are pigs. So far. All right. Nah, not feeling it. Get a bite of me, baby. Yeah, that's all right. Dead flies. Eh. I say get Fly Guy in here and just let him play. Eh, let's stick with the... Let's stick with Cop Apologia. Caston Mavis, the new star of Rock and Roll. And voila, the master himself. What a finch. Uh, Sonny, he's a pigeon, not a finch. Don't make me angry, Marty. Okay, I was only joking. Can I have some hot coffee? Yeah, I can smell it already. How does he make the coffee here so special? Look at that mangy trash panda and tell me, do you really want to know? Um, you're right. As always. Uh, let's see. Doodles. We got some doodles. Fuck the king. Where all the colors go? That's a good question, pal. Where are the colors? Where they all go? Kenzo Uji, where the colors go? I love that we got a burger and these two uh, two identical burgers and fries. Even though there's no one in. The burgers are lopsided as fuck. Still don't eat meat, old man? I'm a rooster, a chicken. Why the hell would I eat meat? Makes a good point. Real meat. I'm not a lunatic. But a meat substitute? There's about ten different kinds. Have you never tried any of them? Why would I? If I don't eat meat, why would I eat a substitute? Because you can. That's the point. Wild gods, Marty. Stop being such a sheep. Do you fall for those adverts? Substitute isn't meat, Sonny. And if it's tasty, why wouldn't I eat it? I don't care what you eat. But don't be surprised when you lose all your feathers or you try to bite off your own leg one day. Oh, no, not my leg. My feathers. So we got we got almost ham and tomato, quasi meat and cheese, all but bacon and chocolate. All but bacon and chocolate. Interesting. All for foul pancakes. Touche souffle. Smelling souffle. Old Zip knows best. Supersized hot dog with synthetic sausage, chocolate mix, and devil horn paprika. I went with the chocolate already. Savannah style hot dog. Veggie burger with diddly squash and sauerkraut sauce. <laughs> Supersized burger with 12 types of algae. That's That's got my money right there. Normal sized hot dog with four kinds of synthetic meat. I don't know. I can't beat that much algae. That's a lot of good algae there. You get your, 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 your amino acids. Your, uh, your daily 12. The door didn't look like this last time. Yeah, because last time you tore it out and beat that baboon with it. Oh, yeah. I remember now. So that's why Zip remodeled the whole place. He had to. We didn't leave much of it standing. 
I didn't know how nice we are, I'd almost hate ourselves. Welcome to the club, partner. All right, zip. Oh, well, look at that. Oh, we can ask him questions. Have you ever been to that place? But not in like an interrogation type man, fa- fashion. In this city's been Again, tried to say matter and fashion at the same time. But then it had a different name and a different owner. Business affairs, right? Yeah, that was the dark era, Sonny. I don't want to talk about it. Roger that. I don't know nothing about nothing. I gotta say, you've revamped the joint pretty well. Yeah, after you trashed it, I had to. Look, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Zip. That ocelot and his gorilla. Baboon, not gorilla. Whatever. Sonny, <clears throat> watch your beak. So you owe me one until about the end of time. But I'd settle for you washing up here for a few years after retirement, Sonny. Mind your tongue for a ball. <laughs> I don't want to do the dishes. So, Ibn's gone insane. Love will kill you in the end, they say. Seems like everyone's in a poetic mood today. You're one to talk, by the way. Huh? Why? So, about that woman. Is she really that dangerous? <laughs> what woman is it, then? No, Zip. I mean, really dangerous. She's got... I mean, like, she'll come in and rip your heart out. ...wrapped around her finger. She calls him her little furball. How dangerous do you think she is? Mm. He'll tear your lungs out, Jim. You didn't get any younger, pal. You're telling me? You look like you haven't had a good night's sleep since forever. To be honest, I've never had a good night's sleep in my life. <laughs> you will when the big sleep comes. And what are your plans? Dying behind the bar? Of course. You got a better idea? A couple. Not dying. But somehow this suits you. You know what? Your mother's a goat. My mother was a saint. You think he might know something about the case? He knows almost everybody in the city. At least he used to once. Let's see if he still does. Hmm. No, no, this guy. That Natasha's a mysterious woman. A real cursed jewel, if you ask me. She came out of nowhere two or three years ago and landed on the stage of the millions almost immediately. Is that so? Interesting. Yeah, she's got a fantastic voice. Makes men go crazy. But we all know that's not what's important. Then suddenly, bam! She got the whole club. Just like that. But we know exactly how it was. I can imagine, yeah. Since then, it operates under the name the Czar Club, right? The old click is still clicking, right? Yeah, the club was renamed and remodeled. Everyone knows she was Ibn's lover, but she's not your usual canary. She didn't get involved in Ibn's dirty dealings. Then Chickens eat small animals like frogs and mice without any difficulty. Yeah, good, good for them. A few months ago, the old rat... So you don't gotta be a vegetarian. You can eat the frogs. Mongrel Mick and his mob. Mongrel Mick? Doesn't sound familiar. Mick the Marauder ring a bell? Damn. That little monkey came this far? Uh, I think that little shit took advantage of Ibn not being himself. Which has something to do with this Natasha, right? That's my guess. Thanks for this straight dope, Zip. We owe you one. That dope is straight. You owe me the price of a new coffee shop, remember? Okay, okay. Whatever you need. Just call us. I cluck and will. Thanks. Yeah. Hey. I'm not your pal, Marty. Hey, I'm not your Marty, pal. You sure talk a lot. Then maybe the past is haunting me. Once a rat, always a rat, right? But Zip, you're a raccoon. Don't be so hard on yourself. You got out in time, and you've been living an honest, ordinary life since then, haven't you? Yeah, right. How lucky am I, eh? It's more than what many others get, believe me. How do I know when I'm done at these optional locations? Yeah. Let's see. 
Sneaky bastard. Meat replacements and meat substitute foods made it possible to reduce meat consumption, predation, and domestic cannibalism in the whole wilderness. Domestic cannibalism, what a beautiful thought. These products are widespread nowadays and are not only popular with predators, but all kinds of animals. They'll eat their own eggs sometimes. Oh no. But my crop, my yields, I need those eggs. Ah, zoom. Zoom, 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 zoom. Well. How do I get back outside? I guess there's no direct go back outside. All right, let's go check out uh, the hotel. Yeesh, my condolences, pal. I see your cleaning lady died. Yeah, she set foot in the bedroom once. I haven't seen her since. I didn't dare to go after her. Oh, I wouldn't want to go in there either. But what's that smell? Ah, cigarettes and whiskey. Yeah, with a hint of dirty laundry, but no, this is lavender? Ah, that. Now, that's got to be the Ibanez dame. You know, the broad who gave me the letter. And the job, obviously. Obviously. Ah, pretty, huh? I can smell it. She's an exotic, too. An Impala, maybe? What are you talking about? That's a foreign car. We wouldn't have those here. Boyle hates you so much. He's jealous because your nose is better than a clucking bloodhound. Nothing here but good, honest American Fords and Chevrolets. He hates all foul. Yeah, Wait a minute. If Impala is a Chevrolet. Never mind everything I just said. I don't know much about cars. Not a bird. So, what now? Let's gather my stuff and head to the club. We gotta find out who this Natasha is and what she wants from us. I mean, what she really wants. After you, boss bird. I wouldn't like to touch anything in here anyway. If it's okay, I'll just stand around and stare out the window. <laughs> sure, just do it quietly. Everything feels greasy. You're getting older, Marty. You look like shit. Ah, gee, thanks. I thought angels don't grow old. But sometimes they get dirty faces. Sure. Boo-hoo. <laughs> when was the last time I was here? I don't know. Years ago. When Molly left. Whew, that was a, a wild night. Yeah. You know, Sonny, you can call me. Not just when you want to investigate some shady case from a shady dame and you need a big meat shield to cover your ass. All right, A, Marty, you shot me, and B, you sound like you're 25. Call anyone. All right, all right, boss bird. Whatever you say. No function. Uh, doing an ask at him. Have you been there before? Uh, never. You know, it's not my style. It's too fancy for me. <coughs> I'm more like the smoky, smelly, ramshack a little joint type. Yeah, same here. But we're not gonna mingle like this, right? We're not searching for a tailor on New Year's Eve, okay? We'll go as we are. That'll be exciting. Let's as we were. As we want you to be. Okay. What trouble? That's the spirit. 
So she just turned up with a message on this flyer, and you fell for it? Maybe I was bored. Or maybe there's more to this thing than meets the eye. Yeah, there's always more. Maybe I just wanted to meet you for old time's sake. That's not funny. <laughs> I've never had a good sense of humor. You know that better than anyone. That's for sure. So the Czar Club, huh? My city's on fire. Sounds good. But that's all? It's kind of weak for a clue. It's not a clue. It's just a guide. By the way, it's New Year's Eve. We deserve some fun, right? Yeah! Let's go drink our body weight and champagne. Easy with you, boss bird. There's something you're not telling me, right? Ah, uh, yeah. If you say so. I think they had the animations mixed up there. Oh, hi, Mr. Sinclair. How are we? Sinclair is doing fine, thanks. Anyway, you still talk to your guns? <laughs> yeah. And so what? Other animals talk to their plants. Crazy, isn't it? At least a gun has a soul. You heard it here, kids. I can't believe you're allowed to walk around freely, Birdie. Oh, if you only knew what I'm packing right now. I don't want to know what's under your feathers, Marty. Gun has a soul. All right. I think we done did that. Let's go check out the Czar Club. Meet this mysterious dame. Midnight had passed, and the intoxicated madness kicked in. We could only crawl along Shalva District's main streets toward downtown. The city's... Oh, no, go get yourself a cup of coffee or something. A caffeine headache is not, not a good time. Like half-drunk lovers on a fine leather sofa. <laughs> Fight sparkly wine is a vicious brute. Good one. <laughs> Garish modern blocks. A place that makes the head hurt. The Tsar's huge neon sign was visible for miles. A blazing red sign advertised tonight's main attraction, the amazing Natasha. Uh, cops were never welcomed at places like this. I hoped we were too late for the show. We had to be inconspicuous, but it was never easy with this bird mountain by my side. Oh, it's Lewis. Hey, Lewis. And, um... Crane? Heron? This is the famous friend? More like infamous, Marty. It's not for our kind, that's for sure. And I don't mean that they don't like foul here. Well, at least we don't have to be afraid that they see you as a detective, boss bird. I'll keep pointing at you, Marty. Oh, maybe not. So what are we going to do now? We find Natasha. There's the point. You sent me the message, remember? But first, we need to get into the club. And Marty, please, don't monkey this up. Hey, Sonny, what were you saying about the racist comments earlier? The well-respected and noble primate community of Clawville. Cut the crap, Marty. Oh, hey, hey. Let's focus Look at that. on what we're here for, okay? As you say, boss bird. All right, let's go monkey around or monkey about. Apparently, there's different points of opinion on that. Hey, that's your old friend, right? Wait, what was his name? Uh, Lawrence Lamar. Pointing chicken. Lewis. Yes, it's him. To be honest, Sonny, I always thought that guy's not all there in the head. Nobody's perfectly sane in Clawville, Marty. But if not for this old rabbit, I wouldn't be here today. I'll never forget that. Should I thank him for that? Or kill him for it? You're reading my mind, boss. Hey, Lou. Sonny, my dear friend. Hi, Lewis. This is my partner, but I'm sure you already know. You have no idea how happy I am to meet you, Mr. Marty. I'm a big admirer of your work. Pleasure's all mine, Lawrence. That's not my name. <clears throat> Anyways, so the legendary chicken police back together. <laughs> Isn't it amazing news? 
Don't ruffle my feathers, Lewis. Those days are long gone. We're just here for the entertainment. Or something like that. My feathers don't need ruffling, Lou. That's a shame. See you inside. I have something to do, my pal, but I'll try to make it for the main event. Okay, then. Catch you later, pal. You gonna be there to be throwing fists with the rest of us? Honestly, I think these types of women only see faceless tuxedos, cufflinks, and wallets. And in the mirror, they're just brooches, necklaces, and earrings. Don't be so radical, Marty. That's an awfully reductive view of women, Marty. By different rules. Mm, that was kind of deep. It's not. Just bullshit. There's more where that came from. Ah, that's right. Master. When you're old and wise like me, you'll <laughs> This is the sequel to Animal Farm. <laughs> this is Orwell's nightmare. Maybe it was, Marty. Maybe. Very noir for some reason. Amazing. Let's not bother her. Okay, boss. But she's a clickable interactable. Yeah, let's go to the newspaper. When the Clawville Chronicle was a really high quality newspaper? You mean when they wrote something about us daily? Yeah. What exactly happened to them? Yeah, they got bored with us, Marty. And to be honest, so did I. But still, here we are working together again. Funny, huh? Yeah. Super funny, Marty. The funniest. The rascliest. I like this. Why is that? I don't know. Because it's moving, I guess. I'm amused by very simple things. Yes, I am. Yeah, well, at least he knows who he is. We got a One sign. Day, neon signs will cover the whole world. I'm telling you. You read that in some kind of science fiction book. No, it's just what I think. What are you, some kind of fucking nerd? Thoughts now. The world's really moving forward. Cluck off, Sonny. What what kind of sci-fi would you have in the fifties? I don't even or forties, I don't even know. You'd probably still be doing with Jules Verne and H. G. Wells and shit. Whoa, look at that. Isn't that the new It is, Marty. A brand new 942 Silver Hawk. Haven't seen such beauty since I left Iveria. Of all that's furry. Whose is it? Maybe it's Ibn Wessler's. I guess he's no paper tiger. Yeah, he sounds like a fellow who drives around in one of these. Lucky bastard. Hey, Mr. Bouncer Man. Jeez, look at that guy. That's not a guy. That's a demon. Straight from the dog-eared pages of a cheap detective novel. Or he's a yeah. goat. I bet his name's Bill. Nah, he's definitely a bob. Five bucks for Bill? Okay, I'm in. You're gonna owe him five bucks. Howdy, pal. Gentlemen, how can I help you on this wonderful chilly night? And we're expected in the VIP lounge. I don't like the proportions on this goat. I've ever seen you gentlemen here before. May I ask? Well, stop right there, big guy. I get it. Yeah, I know exactly how... The dark fur makes it kind of difficult to find his eyes. Nothing's easier, sir. Are you on the list? The list? And it goes up yeah. too high. I... Uh, uh, if the dark if the dark parts of the fur didn't go up so high it'd be a little more delineated Sorry, and easier guy but I'm pretty sure we're not on the list tonight that's a shame I really saw this us in that case you can't come in yeah right thanks oh my pleasure cool man. uh but mr goat uh I'm getting into this nightclub and um you can't stop me, so... Averia is a country inhabited exclusively by birds. It was a picturesque modern place governed by a democratic parliament. It's bordered by two seas and its economy built mostly on air transport, commerce, and its aerial military. 
The countries on neutral terms with almost every other nation, and except for the Great Meat War, had kept the standpoint all throughout known history. Switzerland finally said no. Give them their cheeseburgers. Look, I really don't want any trouble, but... It is even more inconvenient for me, sir, but this place doesn't like uh, coppers. Forgive this line. I can't let just anybody in, and there are some I am strictly forbidden to. Please, you have to understand. Slap some horns on Jean Renault. Do you have any idea who we are? You ever read the papers? Of course, I know who you are, sir. I read the news and more, and I must admit it's an honor to meet you in person, Mr. Santino Featherland and Mr. Mar oh, really? Chicken. The Pell of the Pantages is one of my favorite books. Oh my god, not the books again. So it will be terribly inconvenient <laughs> for me. It's like supernatural. They gotta go around and deal with the fucking books. Gentlemen, what, what did you just say? Relax, Marty. This guy has chicks like you for breakfast. Uh, thanks for the information, pal. Uh, have a nice night. Thank you for understanding, gentlemen. And forgive me for my austere composition. No problem, Shakespeare. Ooh, he's got one of them Sherpa fleece line coats. Say, big guy, you know Mr. Lewis Hayworth? But of course. Mr. Hayworth is an impeccable gentleman, and also a frequent visitor of the club. Is that so? Good to know. And? I'm afraid that is all, monsieur. Well, he happens to be a good friend of mine, so... What can you tell me about the first lady of the place, big guy? Uh, you mean Miss Natasha Katsenko, sir? You're right on point, pal. Nothing you don't know already, sir. Just try me. Well, she owns the place. And, uh, that's it? Well, that's, um... Uh, she's a cat. Uh, she speaks with a Russian accent. Um... She's probably setting you up to take the fall for some shady dealings. Look, Lewis, that bouncer over there. Well, yes, he is a bit intimidating, but his manners are impeccable. Am I right? Yes, indeed, but it seems tonight we're not on his list. Oh, I see. Uh, um. Oh, I get it. I get it. You'd like to go in, but he won't let you yeah that's pretty much what's going on there louis yeah no 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 problem at all come with me i'll t t t talk to him much obliged pal yeah thanks bunny excuse me ah oh, jeez what the hell's wrong with you marty what did i say something wrong i am a rabbit sir How'd you do? Everything's fine, Mr. Aworth. Good. <clears throat> uh, look, this noble pair of pigeons are my friends. They're on the list, okay? Merci la mon, sir. <laughs> And as for you, <clears throat> you owe me one, g g g gentlemen. Thanks, old pal. It was my p p pleasure to help you, as always. Maybe you could uh, pay your rent sometime. Oh no, Lewis wouldn't the have the weird hard-boiled voice. Us. There was no band in sight, yet the music seeped from the walls like years of cigarette smoke and the smell of spilt whiskey. Behind the bar, rows of fancy bottles reflected the harmonious voices of pretty dames and the clinking of crystal glass. It was the kind of place that makes you drunk, even if you've never had a sip. A dangerous place for someone like me. No matter how alien I felt, it was strangely like coming home. Welcome to the Tsar. Well, here we are. Mother of... I take you to the nicest places, eh, sweetheart? Oh, does it mean you're buying, honey? Don't even think about it. Oh, men these days. So, we're here to find a dame called Natasha. I have a hunch she won't be hard to find. Let's mingle and try to avoid suspicion. Just like always. No, Marty, not like always. This time it's for real. 
Ugh. What do we got? Oh, wow. Hi. You're awfully close. Can I help you? Hey, there's Philmar. Who? Oh, yes. Philmar. Because that's what he calls himself, right? You know him well? We had some seriously wild cases together, yes. Mainly in Averia, way before Clawville. Another place and another life. Sounds good. Like the blurb of some cheap pulp fiction book. Yeah, it was the exact opposite. But the old bird's worth saying hi to. Hey, Phil Marr. Oh, if it isn't the great detective, Marlowe. Blow me, Sonny. You know I don't use that name anymore. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Dumbass alias Phil Marlowe. So says someone who tried to go undercover with a feather pillow mafia is a turkey. Right, Mr. Turk Cayman? <laughs> that was a long time ago. I was young. And I stick to my principles and my stupidity. Phil Marlowe and that's that. Don't rile me up, you old fart. Okay, okay, fair enough. Sorry, I'm a little clapped tonight. Uh, I know the feeling, pal. By the way, what are you two doing here? You stick out a bit. Are you here for a good old-fashioned beating? We stick out? Man, you look terrible. Like someone who sat on an electric pole. Don't even ask. I feel exactly like that. You want a case? Five feet tall, half of that legs. Angelic voice, demonic eyes. Just the usual. Oh, boy. And you? Something like that. Just don't know the exact numbers yet. A dame named Natasha. She called us here. If I'm not mistaken, the joint is hers. Yeah, she owns the joint, amongst others. Well, good luck, guys. That broad has a reputation. She's not the kind to toy with, if you know what I mean. Any useful information? For free? Stop clucking around, Philmar. All right, but just because of the old days. Look for me after you talk to her. You wouldn't understand what I have to say about her before then. So I had to look it up just now. You're thrown out. Um, you know the drill. We don't know each other. I'll deny you in a Apparently. Good to see you too, old pal. We'll be back. So in in musical circles. Oh wait, hold on. A thing is happening. Uh, so in musical circles, you know, if you're going to snap or long or clap or whatever, you always do it on the two and the four. Two, three, four. And I was confused because in my head, I've definitely seen it done on the one and the three, whereas that's what'll get you, you know, made fun of. Apparently in blues music, it's one and three is what you're supposed to typically go along with and I did not know that hmm. look uh Sonny I know it's not my place oh no I got a drinking problem his father went to that guy steal the fancy whiskey you're treading on thin ice Marty no I just <laughs> look fellas at the station are talking you know all kinds of things. Moses, Plato, Bosco, and the others. Talking, eh? About what? About why Blood Boyle took my badge? About what an untrustworthy alcoholic wreck I am? Look, uh, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. Good. And let it stay that way. At least we're cracking this one together, yeah? Sure, Marty. Two whiskeys, kid, and no horsing around. I've never heard that one before. God, what the fuck? You gotta drive, you know? Yeah, you're right, Marty. Hey, long face, give me a glass of tap water, too, okay? Yes, sir. Coming right up. This disillusioned 90s teenager of a horse bartender. Come to daddy, darling. 
calling Boo's darling. It's kind of weird, don't you think? No weirder than talking to your guns. Gun collection is harem. Touche. I'll shut it. Good birdie. Good old Philmar knows something that could be important for the case. Philmar, old comrade from before the Clawville times. Yeah, I've never heard it pronounced Harim before. That's interesting. What did I miss? Oh. Oh, just his. Yeah. Codex. The Clawville Chronicle is the most read and highest quality newspaper in the city. It's so famous that it's also being read beyond Clawville's borders, and not just in the colonies. This was the paper that first published an article about the two heroic roosters, a.k.a. the Chicken Police. This article was written by Timothy Saltwater, the seagull journalist who has since become somewhat of a legend himself. Stupid voices are fun. <laughs> Shut up. She has pretty long legs. I mean, pretty and long legs for a squirrel, but I don't want to be prejudiced. We're not here to stare at pretty squirrels. We're here to investigate, remember? Yeah, she's one of them uptown squirrels. Living in her white bread world. <laughs> Mr. Big Buck. Where the hell is Natasha? Well, let's ask that stud over there with those nice gals. Mm, that guy looks way too horny for my taste. Yeah, that, 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 dumb. Humor is bad as ever. You just need to get used to it again. What if, uh... Throw him in the horny jail. We got the horny paddy wagon out back. Because we're cops, you see. Let's see, we got, uh, oh. Oh, hello. Yeah, there's the there's the weasel himself. All right, let's work our way there then. What else we got? We got everything over here, right? Yeah, yeah. We got the big buck. What about this stage? It's empty. To have missed the main event. You're a rusty old cock. That's why. Hey, so says the little butt jam. But what? butt jam. What? Word. It is now all because of you. You should feel honored. But Jam. What? Uh, you know, Sonny, sometimes you're like an evil little child. The juiciest booties in the butt jam. A fox is a wolf who sends flowers. Mm. What? Oh, nothing. I read it somewhere. Fascinating. I didn't know you could read. Ha ha ha. Very funny. Now we got some movie posters. The loudest howl. He has the case. He has the girl. He has the gun. He is the alpha. Huh. Another lupus movie. Jeez. Is there nothing today they're not trying to sell with this guy? Whoa, don't be rude, Sonny. Lupus is a timeless genius. Have you seen Predator City? God, I'm still getting chicken bumps. But wait, who's that next to him? Cassandra Ruby Fay. Nah, never heard of her. Cassandra Ruby Fay. Oh, gods, even her name makes me go weak in the knees. Watch. Do chickens have knees? Don't mind me, just... Women and guns are my only weakness. And cocaine and heroin and mindless yeah. violence and getting small animals in the woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bogan and Bandicoot. <laughs> you think this is one of those movies where the femme fatale gets everything in the end and the poor detectives left stranded? Yep, just like life. Foreshadowing. 
I haven't played the game but yet, but probably. Ooh, I've seen this. Hicks Poodle plays a private eye, hired to look for a woman, then gets into some kind of blackmail thing that's connected to the first case, and... Hey, uh, Marty? What? Yeah? I don't give a shit. <laughs> I know this fodder guy. He was kind of good in Death of the Horse. <laughs> You've seen every cluckin' movie. You know, Laura and I go to the movies a lot. When was the last time you went? Exactly 12 years ago. Oh, you remember that precisely? Let me guess. Molly? Yep, our very first date. I see. What did you watch? I don't remember. I just remember her and nothing else. We watched Casablanca, and I still haven't gotten over it, if you couldn't tell. Hey, Mr. Bobcat. This guy is certainly not a gangster henchman. Of course he's not. I guess I can't talk to Mr. Bobcat. All right. Ibn or Dame with Ibn? Let's talk to the Dame. Uh, look at the name again. With Ibn. I think I know her from somewhere. Maybe in your dreams, pal. Okay. All right. It's the big cheese himself. It is. The great Ibn Wessler in the flesh. So much for our incognito. You think he noticed us? Only if he's not entirely blind. <laughs> I don't think this game is trying to go for the kind of gravitas that Disco Elysium was going Just for. Just nonchalant, my friend. No, it can't be. What now? Is that Olivia? No, Marty. Hey, uh, Olivia. Are you talking to me? It's me, Marty McChicken. Oh, God. What a pleasant surprise. The most the coppers in person. Chicken police. But yeah, Mr. Wessler, you could say so. The name's... Sunny Featherland, of course, of course. Chicken police. Your partner is... Uh, he is... Uh, Marty McChicken, sir. I, I just introduced myself to your lady companion seconds ago. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy to see you. Marty, you're kind of forgettable. You're kind of the least impactful character in this game so far, I'm sorry to say. It's a toss-up between you and the nice dear lady. Cut the crap, Marty. All right, we're here for your sweetheart, Natasha. Oh, I see. No big deal. Just a blackmail thing. You know, horrifying threats written on the wall with blood red paint. The usual stuff. You must be familiar with this kind of thing. Oh, yeah, indeed. It's a uh, nasty business. But I didn't know Natasha hired a detective because of this simple matter. But to be honest, I understand. I would have taken matters into my own hands, you see. But. I'm kind of busy. Mr. Wessler had a meeting with Attorney The Crow has the, um... If you would excuse us. General Hamtaro. Attorney General Hamtaro. Okay. These gentlemen are just doing their job, right? And if I've heard correctly, they're notoriously thorough. So, how can I help you? We've got a few questions, if you don't mind. I'm at your service. Oh yeah, no, the dear lady is definitely hiding something. The crow has got the one, um, the fingernail polish thing. Her ring finger is, is white and the rest are black or red, maybe. Black, you know, black and white, hard to tell. Um, that's definitely like a more modern fashion. I don't know what it means or if it means anything, but that's definitely not period. Have your actor wash her fingernail polish off. Nice bunker you got here. Well, thank you, but it's not mine. Not anymore. But I'm sure you already know that. Listen, detective. 
If you want to know something, please ask straight, huh? All right, Mr. Wessler, let's make this a bit more professional. Hmm. Uh, apparently, it is a... Uh, it can be. A, uh, a signal that you are attracted to the same sex. Huh. Good to know. I have not seen those. That's That would be interesting. I've seen colorized, like they shot a couple episodes of the Munsters in color, and it was... didn't look right. But I'd be interested to see how they got those those shades the way they did. I'm not as exciting as people tend to believe. I grew up in a poor family of many siblings. I'm the only one still alive, unfortunately. My career started with a shoe store, and now, here I am. I wouldn't call that an average life. Shoe store owner to mob boss. How dare you speak to Mr. Wessler like that? Leave it, Olivia, dear. It's just provocation. I'm sorry if I offended you, Mr. Wessler. Shall we talk about something else? Ah, so if it's that kind of a signal, maybe it was, uh... Maybe it was used for that purpose back in ye olde days when you couldn't necessarily be, you know, more open about such things. Everybody knows Mr. Hayworth. He's an antique piece of furniture in this city, so to speak. He's a rabbit. It's not my fault that he's so much in debt, Detective, but the name of his family still rings quite loud in Clawville. Is that still worth anything? The name is just a name, of course, but the man behind the name is another man, Mr. Featherland. You're a pragmatic rat. Thank you. I love that, the, the whole Adams family, like, becoming the, like, the base for, like, modern goth look, and now but it was actually all made of, like, pinks and, you know, brighter colors. Look, detective, if you want to know something, just ask. All right, Mr. Wessler. Yep, we can question the old, the, the, the weasel. Has your assistant been working for you long? Are you talking about me? Yes, I'm talking about you, ma'am. Let me answer your question, then. I've been in Mr. Wessler's employment for six months. Why do you ask? Oh, just uh, routine questioning, you know. Most of them aren't good for anything. Just killing time. It sounded rude to me. Yeah, please forgive a detective. Olivia's a real firecracker. Hmm. She's a pretty little pistol. She's a... Wessler is a tricky guy. Unfortunately, shot a hot sauce in the tamale. I have to be cunning. I can't just pin him against a wall yet. All right, we gotta, we gotta push him. We gotta push him to the, to the, the positive end of the meter there. How did you feel when you heard about the black? How did you feel when you heard? Oh, that's right. He's gonna. Read it. Honestly, I found it ridiculous. And now? Now I'm kind of interested. But I wouldn't call it blackmail yet. They're just empty threats. There were no demands. Good point. Thank you. Are we done? Not a chance. Quite. I'm sorry to hear that. I don't know of enough about him, so I have to be cunning. You seem a very busy man. May I ask what you do? Oh, right, he's gonna read the whole fucking man. May I ask what you do? Eh, it's, uh, uninteresting. Would you elaborate? Eh, I got a small share in the meat substitute business. If the new product works, eh, maybe we can make your job easier. You won't be out there getting all the cannibals. There are such plans. Uh, if you're interested, talk to Olivia, my assistant. She's an expert in what she does. Uh, <laughs> unlike me. Thank you. That's it for now. Mistrustful, tricky, secretive. You're yeah. very 
taciturn, Mr. Wessler. Though I've heard you're quite the speaker. Look, I'll gladly talk to anyone about business. And even happier to talk about art. But, uh, I'm no fan of interrogation on a night out. Are you even on duty? Sorry for any offense, Mr. Wessler. Let's talk about something else. Wessler is tougher than I thought. And he's secretive. It's time to gently beat around the bush. I'm no good at that. Oh no. It went down. Spend a lot of time here. A lot of your time here. It's a strange question, you know. Humor me. Well, of course I spend a lot of time here. I'm here every time Natasha performs. Sadly, yeah, it's getting rarer. Is it compatible with your other businesses? Huh? What? Writing threatening messages and hiding them? I didn't say that. You're sly for a foul fiddle end. But this ain't your territory, is it? I guess not, Mr. Wessler. Business going well, or everything all right between you and this feels a little too on the nose. Business going well, Mr. Wessler. Yeah, depends on which one. Real estate, catering, charity, protection, extortion, bribing cops, contraband, the usual. It's important to diversify your portfolio. How are the casinos? <laughs> Fine, thank you. Yeah, gambling has always been a good business. Luck is expensive around here. <laughs> Damn, if only I knew that. I heard gambling was illegal. And I've heard you're not on the force at the moment. Then it seems we have a fair fight. On uneven ground, Mr. Featherland. I'm not sure I'd stand on it for long if I were you. That was candid. Yeah, I try to be clear. Well, all right. More bush beating. Between you and Natasha? Yeah, you don't beat around the bush, do you? <laughs> Understandable, I guess. Or not. Naturally, our relationship is stable and perfect. I'm the setting, she's the gemstone. Yeah, if you know what I mean. I rarely hear such poetry, but uh, I understand exactly what you mean, Mr. Wessler. So, you have your answer. No recent friction? Hmm. Wouldn't you like to know? It would make my job easier. Yeah, it would only lead you astray. So be glad that I tell you no. No friction. Ibn is quick-tempered, and I can use that to my advantage. I've confounded and softened him with my previous questions. Now it's time to be specific and ruthless. Right to the heart! Have there been similar threats, or...? Eh, yeah, let's, uh, let's ask about the threats. threats in the past. Right to the point, yeah? Yeah, I get it. But sadly, this is a dead end, my friend. No, no threats like these, uh, whether you believe it or not. Well, it really seems like a dead end, so I'll just back up and try from a different angle. Oh, uh, no. Did I get bad points? Oh, I got bad points. How did you two even meet? The boss and the pussycat, eh? How did you even meet? Huh? Are you trying to piss me off, Corpora, so I accidentally let some big secret slip out, huh? A simple answer would work. <sighs> you know, Natasha, she's both connoisseur and muse. Uh, hey, Schottenjager, how goes? How was it? Uh, uh, when was it exactly? You don't remember. That's strange. Ah, yeah. We're interrogating the weasel crime boss. It was like another lifetime. It happened right here. Only this place was called the Millions back then. Hm. She was a dancer. Behind the scenes, I arranged opportunities for her on the big stage. Yeah, maybe she still doesn't know it was me. 
And one day, I invited her for a drink with the promise that if she was willing to meet me, I'd buy the place for her. Now, I guess she was willing. The next day, she had the club in her name. Well, that is romantic. Yeah, there are many kinds of romance, Birdman. There's cheap and there's expensive. You keep what you can afford. Do you live in the same house as Natasha? Oh, you're really something. Natasha's a free woman, but mostly, yeah, at my place in Gold Town. But she has her own kind of a weekend house. Mm, how often does she use the weekend house? Yeah, every other weekend, roughly. I see. That's very important information. Yeah, if you say so. I'm going to get something out of you. Is she completely alone when she's there at the weekend? As I've told you, Natasha's a free woman, eh? She's an adult. She doesn't need an escort. Or, uh, she didn't need one until now. I'd say she probably fucking needs one right about now, huh? What do you think? A big star like her, alone in that house. I never said a black car doesn't drive by two or three times a day, but, uh, it's just caution. Huh. I'm not a monster after all, am I? No, I suppose not. So Natasha feels like she's in grave danger, yet she's still going out alone. Yeah, I know what you're getting at, but I'm 100% sure of her loyalty. She's gone out very rarely since this started, and mostly in my company. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if you do, but uh, in our social circles, banquets and dinners are frequent. Hmm, illegal gambling nights. <laughs> you got me there. Yeah, you're right. Natasha is crazy by the roulette wheel. Always putting it all on the red, right? Yeah, you're a real rotten bastard, Sonny. Although, yeah, always on the red. Yeah, right. So, can we meet you? Hmm. Right? Mm, I don't see why not. But first, please, listen to her sing. She's on soon. Oh. Decent cop. Not perfect, but decent. Thank you for your time. We'll be seeing you. I have no doubt about that, unfortunately. Hey, uh, we should, uh, grab a coffee or something, Olivia. You know, for old time's sake. Pleasure to meet you, gentlemen. Goodbye. Oh. Damn it, Marty. Please, take a seat. The show's gonna start soon. Ooh, the show. And they all think it's nighttime. They've done they've done a couple of um, moments where you can see like where color pops out, you know, very the red jacket and Schindler's List kind of a thing. Sonny. universe and see that movie <laughs> that was god roger rabbit's good though unique oh it still fucking holds up so well cute. nobody has 
has ever given me such a unique compliment before. Uh, forgive me, my name is Santino Featherland. <laughs> I thought so. You look more or less like I imagined. More or less? Sometimes less is more, Mr. Featherland. <clears throat> ah, with the wordplay. Amazing, dear. As always. Could you be my little furball and fetch me a cocktail? But of course. Ibn will be back soon. We'll have a few minutes to talk. Then he'll end the conversation and throw you both out. <laughs> With all due respect, ma'am. I don't know how well it would work, but I'm still fascinated at the thought and would love to see it. Me. <sighs> Doesn't matter, he'll do it. That's why I'm telling you. I don't want a scene. <laughs> My room's upstairs. Meet me there in 20 minutes. Come alone, Sonny. You'd be too conspicuous otherwise. Hey. Hey, Marty. Why don't you stay down here and bother the old flame? Marty at the station. I don't have time, Mr. Featherland. Well, sure thing, Natasha. I'll come to your room. Three knocks, a short pause, then another three. I'll be waiting. Go, before he comes back. I knew she was trouble the first time I saw her. She wore danger like a perfume. It was simply part of her being, and it attracted me like light attracts the moth people. I wanted to be the microphone as she whispers her melodies, or the pillow she rests her feet on while reading some cheap romance. I wanted to be her nightdress, barely touching, barely covering her marble skin. But I was a cop. And a Tell us how you really feel. To rid myself of what a woman like her hides under her makeup. Keep your distance, Sonny. Just keep your distance. Let's see, we got us a painting on the wall. That is a uh, unique picture and kind of daring. I admit I've never seen anything <laughs> quite like it before. Yes, I admit it's a little daring. I keep it. It evokes good memories. A precious old friend. <coughs> oh. It's a wonderful artist. <coughs> I didn't, I haven't seen it, and I probably won't, but there is a part of me that wishes I could have been there on opening night. I don't know. I don't compliment often. To see the first launch before they sent out the, the corrected footage, because initially, apparently, um, Cats would have been better if it looked like this. Uh, apparently, the initial uh, release, the animators had put fucking little CGI buttholes on all the cats and god I would have loved to have been in the theater when when that started to become apparent you got a beautiful place here Natasha a peaceful little island. it's like that episode of Bob's Burgers <laughs> during the art Very fair classy furniture Ibn likes me surrounded by elegant things you know you're an elegant thing yourself, sweetheart. Oh, that's charming. Thank you, detective. I bet you spend a lot of your time staring into the mirror. Do you even recognize yourself? Maybe you were trying to be rude, but, you know, that's a very good question. I was just trying to be rude. Oh, really? I was trying to be a dick. It doesn't work so well if you engage with me on an intellectual level about it. I don't want to leave. So. This woman's aware of her charm, and she knows how to use it. A rare and dangerous combination. Some would say she's got legs, and she knows how to use them. You like your bourbon, Mr. Featherland? In a glass... But thanks, I had a couple before I came. I feel like this may be a long night. I hope it 
doesn't bother you if I have one myself? I get offended if women don't drink in my company. Oh, you are a funny guy. So I've been told. Anyway, uh, lovely room. Yes. Look, Mr. Featherland. It's sunny. Saves us a lot of time. Okay, sunny. So, why am I here? You know, men tend to babble in my presence. It must be exhausting. It is, but you're not the type to beat around the bush. Is it too banal if I tell you it's an occupational hazard? Terribly. So can I start the unpleasant questions? I've asked you here so you can do what you do best. Really? I thought you asked because you wanted me to investigate for you. But if you'd rather be drinking... Hey! You do have a sense of humor. How reassuring. Only if I'm a bit hungover. That's usually quite common. Oh, please drop the act about being the alcoholic, heartbroken ex-cop, Sonny. It would undoubtedly suit you, but um, I've seen you scanning my room. From the second you set foot in here, you started working, and everything I say gets sorted in your brain. Am I right? You don't know me. It's a bit of an exaggeration, but yeah, it's something like that. Well then, Sonny, come at me. Oh, that's something I don't hear often. With pleasure. She knows. She knows. <laughs> oh no. Uh, yeah, Ibn definitely knows more. Yeah, we got that. Ooh, excuse me. Uh, mysterious woman, dangerous, but uh, undoubtedly in serious trouble. Is she the source of the problem, or is someone else? Oh, sorry, he's a rat, not a weasel, by the way. He's currently busy with some kind of meat substitute business. And he's acting strange and hesitated when I mentioned how he met Natasha. Wesley's assistant and escort, finding out whether there's anything other than a working relationship could be useful. Alright, lady. Natasha is a confident woman. I can exploit that, but I must be careful. Every part of her oozes danger. That was a remarkable performance. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Do you perform here frequently? You're also the owner, if I'm not mistaken. It must be easy to get space on the stage in that case. But the stage still calls my name, and I perform just a few times a year, and always with a new song. So that was all the excitement. I have many admirers, if that's what you mean. Yes. Confident and mysterious. Let's talk about the painting again. The picture on the wall is quite daring. Only if you knew how old I was at the time. I think I'm on a slippery slope here. Well... Be shy. Ask me. All right. How old were you? <laughs> Did you really believe I'd tell you? You're quite a player, aren't you? Life is anything but a game, detective. Uh, you tell me. Cat. Yeah, let's play it straight. Your admirers might be behind the threats. Those who admire me usually idolize me. Yeah, no, it looks a little weird. I don't think it's one of them. You know, the soul of an animal is extremely complicated. Sometimes all it takes is a bad look or some small rejection to turn admiration into hate. 
that's a stillborn theory. No one hates me if they once loved me, Mr. Detective. Ah, I see. Do you have any evidence? Do you have I like any evidence? material evidence concerning the threats? You may think I'm irresponsible, but I didn't keep any of it. I simply couldn't bear to look at them. Didn't you think maybe the police would need it? I didn't think I needed the police. Moreover, do you think the girlfriend of Ibn Wessler could ever turn to the cops? I see. So, what about me? How do I come into the picture? I need the clues. Sounds ridiculous, but you're my last hope. Obi Cluck Kenobi. Ridiculous, but I accept my ego and uh, old habits. You can't do anything else, can you? Something like that. A leopard can't change its spots. Deep behind the diamond skin lies the truth. It doesn't matter how hard Natasha's trying to hide it. She's scared. Now I must concentrate to finally find out what I want to know. What do I want to know? What was in those threats, exactly? The message itself is not a threat. It's just a word. But a word again and again is threatening. Exactly. So Biscuits. 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 Used for a woman like me? Biscuits. Yes, I do. Yes. I think I know what it could be. Whore. <clears throat> Cat got your tongue? Am I right? You heard it. I said what you were thinking. And you I was thinking it was going to be like a communist thing. What with the red letters and all? On the paper and painted on I guess I still got a disco in my head. Red letters. Well, thank you for your honesty. Whore cat. Poor cat butt jam. What about Philmar? Is he here because of you? Mr. Lowe helped me before, and yes, he was the first I approached. You've managed to curb my enthusiasm a little. Doesn't keeping two irons in the fire give me a better chance? But you don't have to worry. He didn't find anything. And he's not interested anymore. No matter how much I offer to pay him. Why? You'll have to ask him. I think I'll do that. Something scared him off. A dark shadow from the past. An ex-lover. A husband, maybe. I'm surprised you asked that just now. Well, I have my habits. Some call my methods peculiar. What a curious way to put it. I'm a curious kind of fellow. So? I've never been married, and I don't really have any serious relationship before Hobart. A more Hobart? dangerous, not serious relationship, maybe? Hobart? I've never been with anyone long enough for them to hate me. Love is just another face of hate. So is hate a face of love, then? I guess. Were you on the run? No, Mr. Featherland. I came to Clawville with a clean slate, and I'd like to believe it will stay that way. Is that you mean, the girlfriend of Ibn West? Ibn's real name? Full name? Yeah, good luck with that. Natasha is a mysterious woman, but I must gouge out at least one of her secrets. Enough games. It's time to know why I'm here. Let's stop beating about the bush. How do you know Molly? Oh, that's right. For that question, but it's still not easy. You knew very well that if you threw in the name of my wife, I'd come to you no matter how vague and suspicious the case was. I just want to know if you're simply a manipulator or you're really that desperate. I really know her. I'm not lying. Oh, really? 
how. Were you a nurse, too? Forgive me, but I don't think so. Don't be rude and so cynical, Sonny. I'm sorry, but that's me when feline claws are at my throat. Molly is an old and good friend of mine. She has nothing to do with this, but I knew that if I didn't mention it to you, you wouldn't have come. Yeah, Natasha, you're right there. I knew you were a decent fowl, that you would help me. That's what you're famous for. Don't go there. Flattery doesn't work. Look, forgive me. I shouldn't have brought your wife into this. You're right, you shouldn't have. But to be honest, I don't think she's my wife anymore. On paper she is, but I haven't seen her in years. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Really? I did. Or a Fowler Fair. I checked you out before I sent Deborah. Cluck me. This case is getting more and more intriguing. Right, what do you want, lady? What exactly do you want from me? You are really as good as they say you are. And I'm not selling lucky dips, Sonny. Find them, whoever they are, and... Whatever it takes. Not exactly, but... All right, but if three old ladies start talking about my future, I'm leaving. The fear behind the confidence shining in your eyes. I wouldn't take the case. I'm not afraid. You're terrified, Natasha. Don't be ashamed. You must solve this. As soon as you can. Money's not an issue. Yeah, it's an issue for me. I'm broke. Okay. I'm a true detective. Just one more thing. I still gotta watch that show. Natasha. Please come to 37 Rochester Street in Flower Town tonight. I'd like to show you something that could be of a great help in your investigation. I was afraid this was coming. Why there? Why not here and now? It's something I keep hidden there. I won't take the risk of Ibn or one of his men seeing it. Isn't Ibn too dangerous to keep secrets from? Sonny, a woman is naked without her secrets. Mm. Especially in that painting. I understand. Oh yeah, I understand everything. So, when do- Ooh, I love Maltesers. The night is almost over. I'll be there in an hour. Don't be early. Look, Natasha, you know... Please, this is very important to me. Sure, I get it. I'll be there. Thank you. Until later, Natasha. <laughs> Goodbye. Go, Empress. Find secrets. Uh, uh, go commit crimes. And then, and then don't tell anybody. Well, half of our clues is they're not saying everything they know about the situation. Clue. Need more clue. Phil, I used to work for Natasha, but he got out of the case before the ground got too hot. Anyway, he kept a piece of evidence. I gotta talk to that little, little wicker basket on the way downstairs. What am I on about? It's almost two in the fucking morning. Well, weren't you supposed to be waiting in the car? I was, bored I was trying to see if Olivia would go out with me. Happened to you? You thought Natasha had eaten me alive, huh? Well, who knows? I mean, she is a cat and you are a bird. I'm too old for this, Marty. Then next time, leave the dangerous predators to me. I didn't mean that, Marty. I meant you. Oh. Phil, where you at, Phil? Still standing right where I left you. Good. So, have you talked to Natasha? In fact, yes. She was uh, kind of mysterious. 
I bet she was. You know, I've never abandoned a case before. Not voluntarily, anyway. But that woman... You're, uh, too old for this shit, huh? <laughs> As you say, pal. That's exactly how I felt, too. Before you leave, take this and examine it closely. Also, what Phil, your tie's done up, Ron. I've decided all of this is not worth it for me. Wow, that sounds encouraging. Take care of yourselves, guys. This case, maybe it goes deeper than you'd think. Oh, that makes my feathers stand on end. Ah, old croakers. You're safe while I'm here. We're not frogs, Marty. Okay, okay I didn't say anything. a key we stepped into it didn't we what is that a series of names phone numbers and another number of all that's furry what kind of a list is this exactly I have no idea, but I don't even want to find I saw a list of names and it freaked me right the fuck out. Dogs. Maybe they play cards together. Sure, that's very likely. Anyway, I pried this list out of a dead man's hand. Somebody dropped him outside the forest, a few miles from the Wessler residence. I should have known she was keeping secrets. Keeping secrets? She's the secret herself. I'm the secret. You're the secret. The whole system's a secret. Don't thank me. Maybe I've just signed your death warrant. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, shut up, Marty. Oh, my death warrant. Good job. Not really a wedding roster. names oh no the death note doesn't work here it's outside of its jurisdiction and we got the location of Natasha's weekend house is that the new There's one thing I'd learned during 20 years of detective work. It's that if someone wants to meet you at a remote location at night, you should bring an army for backup. One time, me and Marty were stupid enough to underestimate a situation like that, and we never really recovered. Was it on New Year's? Here we were again, about to step alone into something hauntingly familiar. Only one tactic remained, as the old dogs say, balls to the wall. From the window, till the sweats. Ugh, this place gives me the creeps. I wouldn't say I like it either. Textbook. I'm telling you, it's a trap. Shut up, Monty. No shit, it's a trap. Didn't you just hear my inner monologue? Shoot. It's not a good sign. Maybe she just lost it when she hurried into the house. Yeah, right. Do you think it belongs to Natasha? No idea. Do you think I measured her feet when I was in her room? Not sure I want to know, but I wouldn't be surprised. Sometimes he goes, uh, the word. Ooh, car trunk. Chicken police, hands up. Marty, that's enough. Damn it, Marty. So, this is the word. What can I say? The message is loud and clear. 
Yeah, what matters is who is it for and what does it mean? I can't misunderstand that if I wanted to. We'll see. Wait a second, did that bimbo put a spell on you? As you used to say, don't let it cloud your objective judgment, boss bird. Watch who you're talking to, boy. So let's see. Marty is voiced by someone named Shy Matheson. Who, uh, quick scroll, he was in Cyberpunk. That doesn't mean anything to me. Dragon Quest Eleven. Didn't uh, didn't Dog play that recently? I'll have to ask him about that next time I talk to him. He played Sylvan though. Oh shit! Oh no! Never mind. He played Albel in Star Ocean and Anamnesis. A N A Anam Anamnesis. I don't know what that is, but it's not the one I. Um, and Sunny is voiced by Carrie Shell. Let's see. He was in Hitman Three. I haven't played that yet, but he played uh, Carl Ingram. Oh, he's gonna be. Oh no, this was a podcast. Never mind podcast of the same name, not the upcoming TV show. And uh, something called The Amazing World of Gumball was a show he was on for a long time, apparently. Not coming up with a whole lot that's familiar to me. It's a Thomas and the Tank Engine type voices. Oh, he was on an episode of Red Dwarf. Oh, he was in A Fantastic Fear of Everything. That's a fucking funny movie. Um, it's about Simon Pegg, who is... Uh, he's a writer who's had a mental snap, and he doesn't leave his apartment, and is just afraid that everything is out to kill him. Um... And he has this imaginary, uh, like, berserker cannibal hedgehog that is, like, after him. It's fucking weird. It's the kind of thing where Simon Pegg, like, was able to get, like, okay, I'm going to go back to my spaced years, but I'm going to have a budget. Uh, he did a lot of additional, lots of, I'm seeing a lot of additional voices type roles. Simon Pegg, The Room. Basically, though. Silvando. Okay, I don't know. I'll have to ask Dog. Marty, before we enter. Marty is Silvando. Of course. She's in the trunk. It's time to get Her Majesty out. That's what I like to hear. Now we go to the car truck. Let's go. Hello, my beauty. Just don't point it at me. That's not safe gun handling, jackass. Easy. I swore I'm not going to shoot you again. Very gallant of you, partner. What, are you still pissed at me? I'm happy to remind you why you got shot the first time. I get it. Now we got to tease that out for an Act 3 reveal. Oh, we've upped the fuck quota in the last 30 seconds. For this kind of deal. Is that from an old movie? God damn it. It's an original. Figures. 
so earlier when they said, ah, the nice dear lady. Earlier when they said, they said Pulp Fiction. She was lying on the floor. And I held my tongue. She looked peaceful, almost. The large pool of blood ruined the picture. Poor, delicate Deborah. Maybe you were too pure and innocent for this city. But in the end, its filth pulled you under. You know, no animal can swim in high heels. Well, there goes my theory about her being the, the scheming vamp behind it all. Wild gods. Fuck even. Yeah, it's her. Deborah. The girl who came to my office. I figured. But what the hell happened? Was it Natasha? Is this what she wanted us to see? No. I mean, I don't think so, Marty. She seemed very attached to the girl, and I believed her. Furthermore, she has no motive to kill her. Natasha meant some object, something maybe the killer wanted, too. And the poor girl was trying to protect it. Did she seem that kind of girl? She risked a lot simply by coming to see me. She would have done it for her mistress. Why is she naked? Was this sexual? I mean, there's no sign of struggle. She seems untouched. Maybe she knew her assailant. Was it a lover? This looks premeditated. So far, the messages have appeared in weird places, but this, this is a new level. It's no longer just about empty threats. Well, maybe Natasha's on her way here right now. Or she was already here and something happened to her, too. Kidnapped. Can't really make out the hands on the clock. Of possibilities, but we can't wait. We don't have time for guessing. Search the house. Search everything. The room's not trash. Whoever did this wasn't looking for the same thing we are. Yeah. Or they knew exactly where to find it. Wait, what are we looking for exactly? I, have I no idea. don't know. It's something important. Things like that have a way of getting noticed when you come across them. Amen to that. Alright, we got some... Deborah is dead, and the word whore is written across her back. Time to do some good old fashioned crime investigating. Meow, 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 meow. It's an exceptionally beautiful piece. What does it depict, I wonder? I have no idea, Sonny. It's so art, I'm scared to have an opinion. <laughs> this must be Natasha's family. Yeah, wealthy. Do you think she's from the Stavonian Tsar's family? Oh, nobody could have survived that massacre. But I'm sure this family was also close to the fire. She's the lost Princess Catastasia. What, an alias? Keeping secrets, and now this case? Do you think it's all connected somehow? Let's not draw hasty conclusions, Marty. Like in the oh. adventure books. Rich animals are all insane. You have a point. We found a Batman door. Oh, you can't be serious. <laughs> Is this some kind of... Yeah, it's a riddle, Marty. But it doesn't make any sense. Why use something as simple as this when a four-digit number is almost impossible? An idle whim, or the riddle has a meaning. Maybe. Four animals into four places. What does it represent? Think, Marty. Where did we see four animals holding something in their hands? 
where did we see four animals holding something in their hands? It's the city crest. Of course, I don't remember exactly what four animals they were. Bah. Message here too. Yes, but this isn't about Deborah, and wasn't meant for her. It was meant for Natasha. Obviously. What have we gotten ourselves into, Sonny? I don't know, Marty, but let's get ourselves out of it as soon as possible. Anything interesting in there? Yeah, I think there is. What do we got? SN. Could be the initials of a person, a, a place, a company, or a club. Too many possibilities. But we must find out where it's from. We have to find SN. I need to go find... Uh... We should call the department. Anonymously, of course. Do you still remember the number? I haven't called my own workplace in years. Cretan. Of course I remember. 555-111. Five, 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 one, one, one. Is it? Since when? Since they invented the telephone. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, I knew that. I was just testing you. Yeah. Thanks, Marty. Right. I don't know if I want to call him just yet. Where did I see that? Is there anything else? There's nothing outside, right? Where did I see that city crest? Probably the police station, if I had to guess. I don't know, Sonny. What exactly are we doing here? Let's hope we can learn something about Natasha and Ibn by sniffing around before we visit that weekend house in Flowerville. <laughs> Oops, Learned too late. From Phyllis and Roy's? Well, I wasn't exactly thinking about them. Yeah, figures. Bosco. Not the police crest. Join the force, protect the crown, serve the people. Still new guy. Ah, there it is. Thank you. All right. So we got we got pelican sheep. Lion and uh, wolf looking thing. supposed to be a fox. Hello there. What could this be? Maybe a piece of a painting. And there's 
some kind of squiggle on it. The signature of the paint. Ah, the damn squiggles. Can't make it out. It's a piece of a painting. Judging by how well it was hidden, I'm sure this is what Natasha wanted to show us. Huh. So a piece of a painting? That's it? And what's that smear on it? It's too illegible to be a signature. It could be anything. Maybe Natasha... Looks like it's torn off of a corner. This is what she wanted to show us, isn't it? Well, that's if we find her. She should be here by now. True. Well, then what's next? How about we peck around town some more? Peck, we peck, peck, that, peck. I think we should gather what we know and try to figure out where we can go from here. Uh, bourbon in my office. Ah, uh, you know what? After all this, I could use a drink. Right answer. But none of the corners on this have been torn off. I don't think there were any torn off of the um, the 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 nude back in her studio. PD, how can I help you? Uh, I found a corpse. A woman. She's dead. Cold. The address is Rochester Street, 37, Flowerville. Sir, please, would you repeat that? Rochester Street, 37. Write it down and hurry up for the sake of the wild ones. Hurry, hurry. Like a pro. Yep. Like I've done it before. Indistinguishable. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. How can you forget a case like that? How many times have you seen a three-headed monkey in your life? I have a memory of a chicken, you know. That's for sure. No. Were you selling these fine leather jackets? Yeah, mook. This game is better than I thought it would be. It's also phenomenally silly at places. A tiny kiosk in the heart of Calavera Hills. Well, let's check out. Should we say hi to the old beaver? Sure. Mullen is an old, old friend, so he certainly deserves a hello. And we do need information. Few people know as much about Clawville as the old woodchomper. An encyclopedia in the flesh. Yeah, he always has something. Do you feel as lucky as this fella? Murdoch and Falcon is a famous law firm in Clawville, run by a blind bat and a bird brain falcon. The taxi company for the upper class only, politicians and gangsters. Mullen's car, ancient but kind of beautiful, like the old beaver himself. So I get Murdoch, Daredevil. They had some big time cases that helped make their name. Falcon. I hope I'll have the opportunity to work with them in the future. I don't get Falcon. Well, that deer looks terrifying. Some things are indestructible, right? Yeah. Mullen's kiosk's been here since I was a little chick. My old man used to drive here from the other side of town for his daily papers. Yeah, many still do. He certainly is something. Mullen's a wizard from a forgotten age. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I suppose you could say that, if you're fucking weird about it. Uh, yes. Yeah, no, that was the first thing I thought, too, with the deer. 
Chandler's used to be quite a prestigious cafe. Magnificent animals had breakfast here. And in the evenings, philosophers and writers would get drunk together and argue. The place is now just a second-hand bookshop. Just a shadow of its former self. Like so many things. And I didn't know anything about the Wendigo legends at the time I watched the show. So a lot of it makes more sense now in retrospect. The Clawville Chronicle, the most read and probably the most biased newspaper in the city. It's supposed to be a royalist rag, but the separatist overtones are getting stronger and stronger every day. Down with the monarchy. We're getting older and older, and Mullen's not changing a bit. Where's the justice in that? He's just eternal. Well, once you hit a certain level of old... That's just kind of where you are for the rest of your life. City. What a lovely thought. But if the city took shape, it would most likely be some kind of vermin. Yeah, true. But that wasn't uh, very uh, politically correct coming from you, pal. Hey, you know I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, I know, Marty. You're too good for this world. Just like Deborah. Thanks, boss. It wasn't a compliment, Marty. Hercule, what's up, old friend? Hello, me lads, it's good to see you. What are you doing around here where you never see a cat, go boy? <laughs> we're working, Uncle Mullen, just like you. But I'm afraid we're also walking a little bit outside the law. But it's New Year's Eve. Couldn't it wait a bit? Whatever the case is, it can't be that serious. I'm afraid... Could be. You don't know. Maybe you can help us with a few things. After all, you know everyone in the city. <laughs> what a compliment. But of course I'll help if I can. I know you ever since you appeared in the city. Young, fresh, full of ambition. And little Marty had been just a chick when he was already coming here every day with his daddy, eh? <laughs> You're like me son, so you are. Oh, thanks, Uncle Mullen. Oh. Mullen, Mullen. The number one fan of the chicken police. Did we meet this guy? Old comrade from before the times of the chicken police. I used to call him Uncle Mullen when I was a fresh patrolman, even though he's only a couple of years older than me. He represents many things I wanted to become. Honest, wise, and always cheerful. Almost everything about everyone worth knowing. All right, Mullen. Questions. Hobart. Okay, Hobart Ibn Wessler. Okay, that is... That. You're not in danger until you're in his way, and that's not so easy to manage as the whole city's in his hands. How come they never tried to approach you, Uncle? What? <laughs> Of course they tried. They wanted to buy the whole area and build some huge parking garage on it. Mungrel Mick, Ibn's number one. I hate this chair. And threatened me more than once. If I hadn't dug me heels in, the others would have sold up. The lawyers behind me, even Biff, the owner of Chandler's. But I told them, over my cold dead carcass. Well, looks like it worked. <laughs> I'm too much for them, lads. Or I'm just too famous around here to get rid of. We could say Ibn's almost almighty, but he avoids scandal like rats avoid fire. Well, he is a rat. That's a good one. Most people avoid fire, I would assume. Lads, but my name still carries meaning. This place has always belonged to my family. If my dead body had been found here or in the times, it would have caused a scandal, even without any evidence. So, he used usually listens to reason. Yeah, when I talked to him tonight, he seemed confused, dissolute, and impetuous to me. He was having a bad day. Characteristic. Are you sure it was him? Are you joking? Ibn Wessler's not usually confused with anyone else. Of course I'm joking. Beaver humor, you know? <laughs> Nobody gets it. Not even the beavers. <laughs> Good one again. I think. What do you know about me? 
What do you know about me? Martin Millan, what's up? How's that beautiful wife of yours? Way to ask the wrong question there. Fine. Thank you. It's crazy you could grab an amazing... Oh, Martin. Okay. Are you blackmailing her with something? Nah, I missed your famous beaver humor. I'm just messing with your son. Anyway, you look good. You're in good shape. You look more like a turkey than a rooster, if you ask me. Um, thanks. What's that supposed to mean? Priceless. Thanks, Hercule. We'll be back again soon. Yeah, sure will. What about Monica Ro Monica Rosen? Oh, the hummingbird at the front desk. Right. But I think she moved downtown. Yeah, she's the poster girl for workaholism. She lives in an apartment across from the PD, but sleeps at the station if she sleeps at all. Some animals just race and race through the years of their life until someone stops them, makes them wind down. Is there someone like that waiting for everyone? Indeed, there is. Somewhere. <laughs> Usually not where we're looking for them. Yeah, right. Wise old man, what about yourself? How's Desiree? What about her? She's still beautiful. Desiree? She's my wife. And I still don't get why she hasn't left me already. Because she's too much like you, you stubborn old damn builder. You see, you're right about that, sonny boy. And, uh, the cubs? Cubs? <laughs> More like jumbo cubs. John sees a hotshot lawyer in Galadia, and Timmy also left Clawville to try his luck in Grassmore. But who could blame them? Good move. Ah, yeah, but they visit me often, though. They're good kids. I know, pal. They're from a good letter. <laughs> if you say so, sonny. Do you know anything about a woman named Natasha Katsenko? Sonny boy, what have you gotten yourself into again? That lass is Evan Wessler's protege, to put it politely. She's the crown jewel of the city. A shining new star. If you dare talk to a girl such as her, you can expect some serious lead poisoning, me boy. Now, Not lead poisoning. Come to you first for I thought they changed out all the pipes. Now. We're in it, Uncle. Up to our combs. If you'll accept the advice of an old shaggy beaver, get to the end of it as quickly as you can and try to make it out with all your feathers. Yeah, that's the plan. But do you know anything about her? Anything uh, interesting? As I've heard, Natasha is quite a mysterious lass. She came from the Stavonian Sardom and fled to Clawville, but from what? No one knows. From the October Revolution. A shrouded in mystery, and that really means good. You're right about that. So, uh, that's your advice? Be careful. At least, sorry boy. And one more thing. What's that? Never fall in love with a woman like her. Thanks, Hercule. Wasn't planning on it. I don't know what you've heard. Nobody plans to, Sonny. Just you can't prove it. Care of each other, okay? And always carry a good gun in your pocket. Oh, I always have one in every pocket, old timer. I know, Martin. I know. We got like five. All right. Now, well, time to go have that. Oh, wait, we got the stuff in the old codex to read. Oh, we know where she came from, but several years that are completely dark. Not even Mullen knew. Maddie's fiance is Laura, a beautiful, warm hearted predator. I don't know what she sees in Maddie, but he's too damn lucky to have such a woman for him. Yeah. Hey, dirty little boys reaching every dark corner of the city. Eternal and unstoppable. At the end of all things, there will be naught left but mullet. What do I miss? Oh, come on. Yeah, still see the station. Yeah, 
There we go. What do we got? Grassmore. Grassmore is a savanna country that has been one of the colonies of Clawville for two centuries before gaining its freedom in 792. Grassmore is mostly inhabited by a peaceful herbivore animals of exotic species. Alright, time to go get that bourbon. We had no choice but to continue the investigation <laughs> but jam. started. In that shady little apartment I called home. The only lead was the list Fillmore gave us, with all those imposing names on it. But what could it mean? And why did Natasha keep it secret from us? But most importantly, what did all this have to do with Deborah's death? The trail started to get cold, and so did the air outside. There was something unsettling in the black clouds. Hiding this all chair the doesn't stars. like just I sitting on it. It starts to go down. Fall. The little pneumatic the cylinder doesn't work. Painful enough. So, what are we doing here? Trying to calm down. I'll have a shot. Sure you will. And we're trying to put the pieces together, of course. Figure out what's next. And what is next, Boss Bird? Let's take a look at what we've learned so far. So, how did this whole case start? Ooh. Hold on. Investigation time. All right. Oh, I guess Natasha was to give us that. How did it start? It started with these strange threats. You see. Against this nice lady. Dressed to her. Yeah, the threats are meant for Natasha, no doubt about that. And then she's afraid. No. Uh, Molly, no. Gangster, no. Something Natasha didn't speak about. She kept it a secret. Natasha is terrified, and she's in real danger. But she kept this list hidden from us. It seems too important to keep it a secret. list tied to so it looks like if it's not the right thing it won't go wait really but what could we do with this list Might know something about it. person who moves in circles high enough to know where it's from. Lewis. We must ask him if we want to get out of this dead end. I don't know if I just guessed, if I just brute forced it there, or if I stumbled into it dick ass backwards, or if I, or if there are multiple paths it can take. I don't know what just happened there. So the card is uh, uh, maybe a dead end. The piece of painting, too. But the list Filmar gave us... Exactly. Full of those imposing names. And I only know one person who moves in similar circles. Lamar. 
Yes, Marty. It's Lewis. Exactly. Of course, it's Lewis. But where do we find the bunny man? He's echoing somewhere. This building, I'm hoping he's here. It's worth a call. You know his number? By heart. 555-932. I wrote it down in my notebook as well. I had to call him earlier. Aha, back where we started. When this is all over, I'm going to hire me a secretary. Have you started on your great novel yet? I've already started working on my will, but I realize I'd have to leave everything to you, so cluck that. <laughs> Pity. It's weird. They use cluck and fuck, so... Socks and bourbon. You'll have to earn it first, Marty. Oh, Louis! Funnily enough, I had picked Lewis because I thought he would be the last person that would fit in the slot to see if it would accept a wrong answer. Hey, so I still don't know. Sorry to disturb you again. Hey, could you come over to my place? I uh, have a question for you. It's very important. It's about a case. A real case with the chicken police. Of course, Sonny. I'll be over in a few minutes. Thanks, pal. I owe you one. Why? Just a second. So you owe him at least two by my count. Good old rabbit. I can always rely on him. Thanks, Lewis. Again. Oh, don't mention it. Besides, it was my victory dream to help you with a serious case. Well, let's hope you can help. What can you tell me about this list, old pal? Hmm. Well, he's well, quick like a butt jam. I know half of them personally. Maybe even more. I knew it. But I have no idea what kind of list this is. There we go. But these are all members of the upper class. Politicians, business people. Oh my. <clears throat> Even the commander of the Royal Guard. Damn. But I really don't know what it means. So, is it a dead end? I'm a afraid so. Dang. Lewis? Deborah, the girl who came to me tonight. Yes. She's a very lovely young lady. Well, was. After you two left. Where she asked me to. To Flowerville. Flowerville? Rochester Street 37? Yes, exactly. Why? Lewis, did you kill her? Nothing good, Lewis. Nothing good. I got this strange card. This? This? Oh, 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 my goodness. I think we have a bingo, gentlemen. You s s see, I also have one of these. A card? It's part of our secret underground sex club we belong to yes. for the elites. It's a membership card to a very exclusive club. How exclusive? Very. That's what I'm talking about. What does SN mean, Lewis? It's the s s s sweltering Nile. But that's a... Well, yes, it's a brothel. But it's not, not like that. It's something completely different. Calm down, Lewis. We're not going to tell anybody. Thank you so much. It is rather embarrassing. <clears throat> Listen, Lewis. How do we get in? Phew. What to get in? Well, if you can show them this card, they'll surely let you in. But it will be obvious you're not regulars there. Where How you obvious? That? So, are we going to a luxury brothel? Correct. Woo! Thanks for the help, Lewis. I owe you one for the third time. It's a B and B and B. I don't know what you s s s s said to him, but after you finished, he almost immediately then disappeared. Really? That's suspicious. Or 
he had business elsewhere. It's New Year's Eve. Everybody's going somewhere. I didn't see... I didn't see her after the show. If I'm not mistaken, she usually leaves when everyone else has already left. What else do you know about her, Lewis? Oh, not much. What everybody knows, she was a dancer, then a backing singer, then st star, and then club owner. We found out as much already. You think she'd fled the Slavonian massacre? That's why the secrecy. Do you mean the massacre of the royal f family? I'd say her accent is a dead giveaway, and her name too, though it's undoubtedly an alias. No, I'm pretty sure the cat has, you know, Cat Sonova is her name. I d d don't think so. Kachenko. Survived that whole, whole, whole awful night. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, it sounds legit. Right, well, tell me about this brothel. The place, Lewis. Besides what they're uh, dealing in there. No, it's an elegant and exclusive place. Not everybody visits them for, for, for that, you know. Some animals just go for c c company. <clears throat> I see. I guess it's mostly visited by the upper class. M mostly, y yes. The wealthy who have a taste. Yes, of course. Is it true what they say? That it's some kind of hidden stronghold of the royalists? Down with the monarchy! Proud herald of the coexistence of all the sp species, yes. But stronghold? I don't think so. But the place must be an eyesore for the separatists, right? Oh, don't, 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 don't worry for the girls, S -s -s Sonny. They can defend themselves quite well. The s -s 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 separatists wouldn't dare to go near the place. Well, we'll see what they have to say about these two old cocks. Hey! It was a little bit, um, equivocal. 